Hello friends. How are you all? This is Fanfic TV. So we are back with an amazing movie on what if Naruto had legacy of White Ranger. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this then be sure to sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The Kyubi no Kitsune, thought to have been one of the greatest demons in the history of the world. In truth, nothing more than a mindless servant of its superior. A superior that had decimated much of the universe in its illustrious rule. The Kyubi fate was sealed to a human child named Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. This is his story. The third Hokage of Konoha looked at the sleeping form of the child in a crib in his office inside. No more than an hour ago he discovered a ninja under his command had tried to kill the child. Luckily he was stopped but now the third was troubled by what to do with the child. A voice from the window behind him said, Tragic, isn't it? Causing the third to turn and see a man in a strange gold armor standing there with his arms crossed leaning age on the wall. The third asked, Who are you and what are you doing here? Ready for an attack in case this was an assassin. The man said, Power down. And the gold armor disappeared and now there stood a man in his fifties with a long brown hair with gray mixed in tied in a ponytail and sad brown eyes dressed in a pair of jeans and a gold t-shirt and he said, sorry about that. I had a long trip to get here and sadly I had not made it in time to stop the Kyubi. The third asked, who are you and what do you mean? The man said, sorry, my name is Tommy and I am one of the Power Ranger or I should say the last of them. The rest of my team was killed by the creature who was the master of Kyubi, Omega. I was at the command center when I was alerted to the Kyubi being awakened Aegean, and I came as soon as I could but I was too late to stop it and now it is sealed inside this boy. He looks like his father. The third said, I don't understand. Tommy said, look, this is a long story and will sound a little far-fetched but I can prove it. Around 20,000 years ago Omega made his first appearance. He went and systematically destroyed world after world after world. Finally after nearly 500 years a group of the universe's top scientists got together and designed a way to stop him. They created the first Power Rangers by combining the universe's best technology and strongest and best fighters in the universe and taught them to use the powers and they were able to save the planet Omega was on by defeating him and then sealing him in stone prison where he should have remained for all eternity. The rangers became famous but a new evil arose bent on taking over the galaxy. The rangers went to combat him and history repeats itself over and over Aegean as some being decides to take over the universe. They would pass down their powers to new warriors and the legacy continued. Around 3000 years ago one such being found Omega prison but could not find a way to release him because the key to imprison him and release him was the original Zords. However because of the passage of time no one knew where to find those zords or how to use them. That was until one of the green rangers discovered them by accident. Unfortunately the man may have been strong but he was also an idiot. He decided to use them in battle without ever trying to use them or learning to control them so he did not know that they were nearly out of power and he was killed but the zords were not. The zords when they were hit had their power cells destroyed so Omega would never be free. The creature who killed the Green Ranger took his power coin but also the Zords and discovered the problem. He was also the creature who discovered Omega's prison. He tried to release Omega but since he used an incompatible power source he only partially released him and in the process was killed. Omega body is still sealed in the prison however his mind and spirit were not and he was able to make alliances with the most corrupt creatures in the galaxy. The tailed beast you call them. The rangers lost track of them for a while and they wound up hiding the original zords but because of what they learned from them they became extremely powerful. Now they travel from world to world seeking out large populations of humans and attacking them trying to find the correct power source for the zords so they can release Omega. The third stood there and said, that's an interesting story but I don't believe you without some kind of proof. Tommy said, I knew that was coming so I will show you my proof. Here as he hands the third a small device. The third looks at it and the next thing he knows is he's passed out. Tommy walks over and picks up Naruto and walks back to the Hokage and soon all three leave in a gold flash of light. The third awakens and finds himself in a strange room with machine and other things he had never seen before. 
He hears a baby crying and he follows the sound and soon find Naruto and Tommy in a room and Tommy is feeding Naruto and said, Welcome to the command center. The third asked, Why did you bring me here and what's going to happen now? As he was ready to attack. Tommy held Naruto out and the third looked a moment and took Naruto and Tommy got up and said, Follow me and I will show you the proof. The third followed and Tommy lead the third into a huge room that was easily bigger than the town of Konoha and Tommy pulled a lever and the third took a step back in fear because there was the Kyubi sitting behind a huge cage on one side of the room. The third looked around the room and saw several other creatures but they looked different than the Kyubi. They were made out of metal where the Kyubi was organic and the third asked, what's going on here and why is Kyubi freed and how is Naruto still alive? Tommy said, Remember how I told you that the, the tailed beast go and try and find the power source to free Omega. Well, your planet is not the first to learn to seal them into humans and as such they have found a way to get free. They trick some power hungry human into searching out the tailed beast for power and then sealing them into Omega prison but in truth all they are doing is freeing them from the seal and Omega sends them off planet while the humans are under what you call a genjutsu. Well what I did was remove the Kyubi from Naruto using a method we have learned to save the human but I left part of the Kyubi in him. Namely Kyubi power and healing ability so he can absorb it. This way I know that Kyubi won't escape and maybe I can find out who they have given Omega to so I can get it and try and find a way to destroy him. The third asked, what are these other creatures? They're the size of some summon bosses but made of metal. Tommy said sadly. Those are the Zords me and my team used before they died 15 years ago on another planet when we walked into a trap set by Omega's henchmen. The third asked, So where is this command center and what are you planning to do now? Tommy said, This command center is actually about an hour's travel from your village. I had brought it here with me when I was alerted to the Kyubi being here. It's hidden under a very powerful shield that makes it impossible to find without a ranger's help. The third asked, if what you say is true then why did the Kyubi attack several times throughout history along with the other beast? Tommy said, simple, scouting. They would attack a village and see how they were advancing and if they were advancing in the right direction then they would go to another planet and then come back making people believe they were asleep somewhere. If it is not progressing like they want then they would destroy all life on the planet. The third nodded and said, you still have not told me what you plan. Tommy sighed and said, I am not a young man any longer. I have maybe 10 to 20 years most likely left to live. I need to find someone to pass on the secrets of the Power Rangers. That way the legacy continues. I want to teach the boy and make him the next Power Ranger. The third said, but why him? Tommy said, simple, the boy's going to have a hard life. Nothing you say or do will change that. Sooner or later people are going to come looking for the Kyubi under Omega control and will take him and kill him. If I take him under my wing I can make him one of the strongest fighters in the galaxy able to defeat any who work for evil and hopefully he can continue what I have left. The third asked, how do you know the boy's father? Tommy said, I was monitoring the battle on my way here and heard what his dad said to him and I even recorded it so I can show him when he gets older. The third sighs and said, I don't have a choice do I? Tommy said, not really, with a hint of a smile on his face. The third said, fine but I want him to also be a ninja like his father. One for our village. Tommy said, that's fine. I know some things about chakra I can teach him and if you want I can come four times a year to your office to pick up stuff you want him to learn and teach it to him but I will not be bringing him with me until he's ready to face the challenges. I don't want him tainted by hate. This place has defenses that make it where nothing can get in here without a power coin and I have all of them. The third asked, what about the Green Ranger one? You said it was captured. Tommy said, I have that also. When I first became a ranger I was put under mind control by an evil witch and she had gotten the coin. She wanted me to destroy the rangers but I was freed from it and soon became the leader of the rangers. The third sighed and said, so how do I get back and what do I tell the people of the village? Tommy said, the truth. The boy left the village with a special sensei to make sure the seal never fails and also to make sure that he can become strong enough to serve the village as a ninja someday. The third said, fine. I hate to say it but I believe you. How do I leave? 
Tommy took Naruto and pushed a button on the wall and the third Hokage phased out and soon found himself in his office. Tommy said, Well Naruto, this is going to be an interesting time, and left the room with Naruto. Six years later, Naruto was sitting in the command room when Tommy comes in with a guest. Naruto looks at Tommy and asked, Who is he sensei? Tommy said, This is a friend I wanted you to meet. He will be training with you every now and then. Naruto I would like to introduce you to Rock Lee. Time skip 14 years after the Kyubi attack. Team Guy were about 20 miles away from Konoha on its first sea rank mission. To stop a group of bandits from terrorizing a trade road. They had found the group but it turned out to be larger than they were told. Guy said, Defensive formation. Watch each other's backs. As he charged a group of 10 coming at him from the front. Lee got into a fighting stance and charged a group coming in from the left and Neji was blocking the group coming in from the right. Tenton was throwing weapons at the merc only wounding them when a bandit jumped out of a tree coming down toward her with his sword out ready to kill her. Neji yelled, Tenton above, as he blocked another enemy and sent a Jukan strike to the mont's heart. Tenton looked up and was frozen in her spot when a white blur shot past and said, Elemental attack, tiger kick as it hit the man sending him into a tree with enough force to shatter the tree making everyone turn to look at the new arrival. They saw a figure in white armor with a black visor standing there and Lee smirked for a second but hid it and the figure pulled out a stang blaster and said, wind elemental blaster. Fire! And he shot out several balls of wind energy and it hit several men causing them to scream out in pain as cuts appeared on their bodies and the figure said, sorry for interrupting your mission but I could not stand to see an ally killed and suddenly he blurred out of view and suddenly the remaining bandits all screamed out as they fell to the ground with cuts all over their bodies and the figure was gone. Tenton asked, who was that? Guy said, I don't know but he finished the mission for us. Let's tie these men up and take them back to Konoha and report this to the Hokage. Lee looked where the figure was and thought, what were you doing here Naruto-kun? You never leave the command center and it's not time for your return yet, or is it? And said, his youthfulness was burning brightly, don't you agree Guy Sensei? And thought, God I hate having to hide my true skills but it's won't do us any good for people to learn I was trained as a ranger. Guy said, yes he was. Not that we're done let's race to Konoha. And Tenton and Neji groaned. A blonde hair boy around 5 feet 10 with his hair grown out and down half his back and spiky on the top wearing a black pair of pants and a white shirt and a white partial face mask like Kakashi walked up to the secretary of the Hokage and said, I have an appointment with the Hokage. The secretary looked at him and said, no you don't kid. Now go away before I get your parents. The boy said, suit yourself. And walked past her desk and toward the doors when she said, hey. You can't go back there. And the boy never stopped walking. Two Anbu appeared in front of him and one said, Kid, you can't go in there. The Hokage is too busy to mess with little kids like you. The boy looked at the two guards and said as he put his finger up to his chin, Really? Then how about you open the door for me? And jumped into the air doing a vertical roundhouse kick as both his feet hit the Anbu under the chin knocking them up and into the door causing them to break of its hinges. The boy moved and walked into the office ignoring the fact that both guards were knocked out and the secretary was gaping and the third looked up from his paperwork seeing two of his Anbu knocked out and said, what is it that you felt you needed to see me about that you would attack two of my men? The boy said, I was told to come here and tell you that Tommy has passed away Hokage-sama. The third was wide-eyed and asked, Naruto, is that you? Naruto said, yeah, it's me, Naruto Namikaze. I was going to be coming back soon anyways but he passed away so I thought I might as well come back ahead of time. The secretary and the guards were not going to let me in so I just bypassed them so to say. You really need to work on teaching them not to underestimate anyone. The third nods and said, so what do you plan to do now? Naruto sighed and said, well, I guess I came back to be a ninja of this village but if the three in the corner under the genjutsu is any impression of what a junin is like based on the amount of chakra they have then I am going to be slightly sick by the lack of skills. As he looks at the corner of the room and the third nods and a genjutsu falls and there are Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurinai all standing there. Kurinai asked, how could you tell we were there? Naruto smirked and said, simple, 
I could hear a peverted giggle as well as when the lady told him to shush. I also smelled cigarette smoke over there and I notice your pipe on your desk has not been light in several hours I would say. What good is it to try and hide when you give away your position with noise and smell? Pointing toward them. Kakashi asked, Are you really an amakaze? Naruto snorts and said, Yeep Sharingan Kakashi, I am your sensei's son. I also see we have the Genjutsu mistress Kurenai and the former fire temple guard Asuma, son of the Sandame Hokage. The third asked, How do you know everyone here Naruto? Naruto sighs and said, Whenever Sensei left to come see you he would stop at each of the hidden villages and pick up a bingo book from each of the villages and had me memorize them all. He said knowledge is just as good as strength and knowing both your allies and enemies would make you better. The third nods and said, How has your other training been going? Naruto said, I am nearly as good as Sensei was. So what do you have need of me to do to be a ninja here? The third said, Do a henge replacement and a bunshin and then I will make you a ninja. Naruto thought a moment and smirked before going through hand signs no one recognized and Naruto said, Done. The third said, But you have not done anything. Naruto said, Really, look behind the three in the corner and tell me what's wrong. Everyone turned and blew back from nosebleeds. There standing behind them was Naruto sexy no jutsu. The third after everyone got to their feet asked, What happened? Naruto said, Simple. I created a kajbunshin behind them, replaced myself with it and then used my sexy no jutsu to show my henge. I used a distraction of doing hand signs so you would not catch what I was doing. And then he went up in smoke and the nude one returned to being the original Naruto. Kakashi asked, how did you do it without smoke or hand seals? Naruto smirked and said, the smoke is my secret but any jutsu because of how I train with kajbunshins I can get my mind and body trained to use them without hand signs however I am limited to jutsu that require five or less to work. So am I a ninja now or do I need to show the next version of my jutsu, with a smirk? The third said, no, that's quite alright Naruto. So are you going to use your last name or how do you want to do it? Naruto thought a moment and said, actually, I would rather people not know it yet. That's why I have the face mask so no one can tell who I am. I don't want to draw too much attention to myself yet but I would like for you to draw up a scroll that I can show as proof when the time comes. For now I am just Naruto, no last name. The third said, very well. I will trust your judgment on this and do you plan to reveal the other thing yet or what? Naruto said, not yet. I don't want to show that until I get a lead on Omega or forced to show it. The third sighed and said, So you're going to go after that huh? Naruto sighed and said, Sensei told me that he already recorded one has left so that means they are starting to track them down. I believe you know what I am talking about. The third said, Yes I know and in fact I believe I might have a lead for you but it will take some time to gather information. Naruto said, Well I got plenty of that and I won't go off in blind rage if you're worried about that. Sensei has taught me how to be cool and calm in battle. The third said, Well, where would you like to stay? Naruto said, Um, I will find a place after I get some money. Maybe I can find someone to roommate with. The third wrote something on a piece of paper and handed it to Naruto along with a hiate and said, Take that to the academy and wait until your sensei arrives. You are on team 7 with Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto grabbed it and smirked at the faces of the senses as he left in a swirl of wind chakra. Asuma said, First time I seen a wind shushin. Kakashi said, He's interesting. Who was his other teacher and what other skills does he have? The third sighed and said, His other teacher was the last master of an ancient fighting style that was almost never recorded but very good. Naruto won't show them unless he deems it necessary so don't try and force it Kakashi. Also I will say this once and only once. His teacher removed the Kyubi from Naruto but left all of the Kyubi chakra and healing abilities so if he uses them don't worry about the fox. Everyone was wide-eyed and Kakashi asked, how is that possible? Sensei's seal is too advanced to mess with. The third said, I don't know the actual process but from what I was told about the Kyubi and the other tailed beast and the fact I saw the Kyubi several hours after its sealing in a huge prison while Naruto was in my arms as a baby so I know it's true. 
Naruto Sensei trained Naruto to pass on what he knows since his years were catching up with him since he knew Naruto would most likely have been killed before he was as old as he is now. After all I had to stop an assassination on him myself that very day. Kakashi sighed and said, well things are going to be interesting. The third said, more than you know Kakashi. Those two guards who are still out were knocked out without chakra or we would have felt it. Naruto headed toward the academy and soon arrived at the destination the third had wrote and saw two girls fighting to get inside and then fight over a seat not even realizing there were two seat. He listened to the teacher inside as well as watching all the kids inside. He was hanging onto the building with chakra and when the teacher got to team 7 he used wind shushin to appear and said, Naruto, team 7 third member, handing the paper to Aruka ignoring the shocked looks everyone was giving him. Moments before Aruka said, Okay, Team 7 is Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura, and your last member is. Suddenly a gust of wind blew and a figure appeared and said, Naruto, Team 7 third member, and he handed the paper to Aruka smirking behind his mask as he ignored all the shocked looks. Aruka looked at it and said, I see, so you are the replacement. I have never seen you before at the academy. How did you become a ninja? Naruto said, I was an apprentice away from the village until my sensei recently passed away so Hokegasama decided to put me with a team for now. Uruka nods and said, Well welcome to Konoha, now take a seat. Naruto nods and Mizuki said, Why don't you take off your face mask and show everyone what you look like? Naruto said, Sorry sir but my clan's rules don't allow me to show my face to anyone other than my lovers. Sasuke asked, What clan are you a member of? The only blonde hair clan I know of are the Yamankos, in his arrogant voice. Naruto said, My clan was destroyed during the Kyubi attack which I was luckily away from the village at the time. Because of my clan's reputation I am not allowed to reveal my last name until certain things are achieved and that includes my clan name so sorry. Uruka said, Very well, the Hitaki clan also has a rule similar to that so I shall let you keep it on then, now please take a seat. Naruto smirked and thought, where do you think I got the idea from? If you're a teacher at the academy you should know when a student is blowing smoke up you ass. Uruka sighed and said, team 8 is Hinata, Kiba, and Shino. Kiba asked, hey man, what was that thing you did when you arrived? As Naruto took a seat across from him. Uruka said, team 9 is in active duty so team 10 is Ino, Choji and Shikamaru. Please wait for your teachers. Naruto watched both teachers leave and said, a simple shushin, nothing really. So your name's Kiba huh? Kiba nods and a dog barks on his head and Naruto said, nice to meet you Akamaru. Kiba was wide-eyed and asked, how did you understand him, nobody outside of my clan can understand dogs. Naruto smirked and said, my sensei taught me how to understand all animals, and thought, Truth is the earring I have in my ear translate all known languages in the Galazi as well as animals so in case I run into an alien I can understand him or her or it. Kiba was floored and asked, who was your sensei? Naruto sighed and said, his name was Tommy and out of respect that all I will say about him, sadly. Just then the door opened and Asuma and Kurenai walked in and said, teammate in 10, come with us and everyone started getting up and leaving all shooting Korea's glances at Naruto as they left. After they were gone Sakura said, I am Sakura and that's Sasuke-kun, the rookie of the year. Naruto reached into his pocket and pulled out a book and said, Nice to meet you, tell me, do you know anything besides the simple, henge, replacement, and bunshin as jutsu? Sakura said, I can dispel genjutsu also, why? With pride like is some big deal. Naruto ignored her and said, what about you, know anything else? Sasuke just HMPHED and Naruto said, I see, your Itachi brother correct. Making Sasuke turn so fast his head spun and he asked, how do you know him? Naruto turned the book he was reading around and showed Sasuke a picture of his brother and said, I remember reading the name Uchiha somewhere and so I was looking it up and saw his profile here. I guess with you and him and Kakashi that's all the Sharingans in the world. Sasuke asked, who is Kakashi? Hoping maybe another Uchiha was out there. Naruto flipped through some pages and turned the book back around and showed them and said, Sharingan Kakashi, known to have copied over 1000 jutsu. 
student of the Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha and a major pervert. Sakura was reading it and said, it don't say anything about him being a pervert. Sasuke was reading it and said, how does he have the Sharingan? Naruto said, don't know but you could ask him. Isn't that right Kakashi Sensei? Making both of the other two turn and look at the door where Kakashi was. Kakashi said, my first impression of you is, point two of you suck. Meet me on the roof. And left in a swirl of leaves. Sasuke and Sakura both turned when they felt a gust of wind and Naruto was gone in one side while the other was jealous and both went to the roof. Moments after Kakashi arrived Naruto arrived and said, Pinky's a fangirl who rather watch Sasuke than train and Sasuke an Avenger. This team is going to go to hell fast unless something drastic happens. Mind if I tie them together and hang them off dad's nose for a few hours, smirking. Kakashi looked up from his book and said, you're different. Naruto said, you have no idea. Anyways I think you should know I would like to talk to you sometime about dad. All I have is a recording of him during the ceiling and that's all I know about him. Kakashi looked at Naruto and said, perhaps. Since you're being honest I will also. The council is forcing this team to pass and making me work with the Uchiha more so sorry if you feel left out. Naruto snorts and said, damn politician. Always fuck up a good thing. The only thing I really need is a few more winjutsu since I have a double affinity for it. Kakashi dropped his book and said, that's rare. I don't know many winjutsu but I can ask Asuma to compare notes. He's the only wind user in the village and I only got a few. Naruto nods and said, thanks. Here's the team. Looking behind him as both Sasuke and Sakura come out of the door to the roof. Kakashi said, okay, now that everyone's here let's introduce ourselves, as everyone sat down. Sakura asked, why don't you go first? Kakashi said, I am Kakashi, I like and dislike a lot of things and I have hobbies. Sasuke asked, how do you have the Sharingan? Kakashi smirked and said, thanks for volunteering. You first. Ignoring the question, Sasuke narrowed his eyes and said, I am Sasuke Uchiha. I don't have any dreams but I do have an ambition, to restore my clan and to kill a certain man. Kakashi said, okay, your turn Pinky. Everyone knows hers so skip it. Kakashi said, okay wind boy. Naruto leaned back and said, name's Naruto and that all you need to know. Kakashi said, well, tomorrow all of you are to meet at training ground 7 at 5 am for a test and don't eat or you will throw up, and left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto smirked and said, in case you can't figure it all we are a team and that means teamwork. CYA. And jumped off the roof and glitted down to the ground ignoring the shocked looks both his teammates gave him as they ran to the edge to see what was going on. Naruto had been walking through town for about an hour now when he saw a help wanted sign in a window and he looked up and saw the building was the wolf claw weapon shop. He walked in and a bell rang and an older man with brown hair and brown eyes looked up from behind the counter and said, Hi, welcome to the Wolf Claw, how can I help you today? Naruto said, Well, I saw your sign in the window needing help and I just recently returned to the village and I was looking for a way to get some extra money. Dustin nods and asks, Do you have any experience with weapons of blacksmithing? Naruto said, my sensei had me learn the art of blacksmithing as a skill to fall back on should I ever be forced to quit being a ninja. I also am very skilled in the, the use of swords and I can make pretty much any mass produce item and also some customs. Dustin looked at Naruto and reached under his counter and pulled out a sword and tossed it to Naruto and said, Alright, tell me what you think of that sword. Both good and bad. Naruto looked at it since it was without its sheath and put his finger at the base of the blade next to the hilt and saw it was balanced and he looked at the blade before flicking it into the air and grabbed the hilt with his right hand as it started to fall and swung it in a figure eight around his arms as he brought his left hand in so he did not cut it and did this a few times and flicked it into the air Aegean and caught it with both flat palms. He said, the blade is perfectly balanced and is made from great material however it has three major flaws. Dustin narrowed his eyes and asked, and what are they? Naruto said, first the blade is not grounded. An enemy who uses lightning attacks can target the sword and paralyze or kill a person based on how strong of a jutsu it was. Second the blade cannot use elemental affinities. 
I tried to send wind through it but it would not accept it. The blade is not strong enough to handle the extra force from it. The last thing is if a person tries and use elemental affinities on the sword it weakens the blade, as he pulled the blade apart and it fell into five pieces. Dustin was floored and said, I am impressed. That blade was my first attempt at blacksmithing when I first started and you found all three flaws. You said you just returned, what rank are you and where are you from? Naruto said, I was born around the time of the Kyubi attack but was taken away from the village since my family was killed leaving me the only survivor. My sensei trained me until just recently when he passed away and I returned to the village. I was just assigned as a genin today. Dustin said, I see, well let me tell you about the job I need help with. The Chunin exams are going to be here the next time around and every time they are we always sell out of basic kuniya and shurikens no matter how many I make. I also make some for the guest who come for the finals with the exam date on them. I want to go ahead and start stockpiling them so maybe I can make a bigger profit. Since you're a ninja of this village I need you to work a total of 20 hours a week to make my mass produce kuniya and shurikens including sharpening. I can pay you 10 for every 50 you make. What do you say? I want to have around 100,000 by the time the exams hit along with any that I sell before then. Naruto thought and said, I can do the work no problem but I was wondering if instead of payment if we could work out some kind of trade. Dustin rubbed his chin and said, what have you got in mind? Naruto said, like I told you I recently returned and I have yet to find a place to stay. I was wondering if I might be able to stay here even if it's in the floor until I find a place to stay and in return I will work one month free. If not I would like a sleeping bag and a tent so I can sleep in the woods as my payment for the one month free. Either way you come out ahead saving around 500 in labor cost and I don't have to worry about finding a place for the night. Dustin thought a moment and said, tell you what, how about this? I have an extra room here since my wife and I only had a daughter before she passed away. I can let you use it as long as you like in return you work here for free and I will give allow you one standard set of kuniya and shurikens every two weeks and provide breakfast every morning. In return you work the 20 hours a week for free. Naruto thought and said, does the standard set come with the ability to add nature chakra to them because I have trained so much all my attacks have it now. Dustin said, they don't but I can give you a set like those instead but it will have to be every three weeks. Naruto said, then we got a deal. Name's Naruto. As he held out his hand. Dustin shook it and said, Welcome Naruto Namikaze. Naruto was wide-eyed and asked, How? Dustin said, Simple, there have only been two families in Konoha that have blonde hair and blue eyes around the time of Kyubi attack. The Yamanakas and the Namikaze, I also was one of Minota's friends so I knew about you going to be born. Also the fact is wind affinities are rare in Konoha. The only other wind user in the entire village beside your dad is Asuma Saratobi. Naruto sighed and said, I guess it can't be helped. I am not trying to draw attention to myself intentionally and using my last name would do exactly that. Besides the Hokage only four others know who I am besides you. So how about you let me get started working on those weapons? Dustin smiled and said, Sure, the forge is this way. I know you said you're skilled and all but I want you to make a standard pack of 20 shurikens and 20 kuniyas and let me judge the quality. Naruto smiled and said, no problem, as they walked into the forge. Dustin said, well, I will be up front, when you finish bring them to me and I will check them, as he turned and left. Naruto smirked and looked around the big forge and created 10 kajbunshans and got to work. One started pumping air into the fire while another loaded coal. One checked the metal findings some that would work to be melted down for standard weapons, another two set up the sharpening tables and the rest started to work on setting the molds and melting the metal. Thirty minutes later Naruto came out of the forge and Dustin raised an eyebrow and Naruto unrolled two cloth scrolls and had the kuniyas and shurikens on them. Both of Dustin's eyebrows rose and he grabbed one of each and looked at it and threw both at a target dummy on the wall. They both went through the dummy making him gape and he asked, how did you get done so quick and how are they so sharp? Naruto held up his hand and wind gathered around it and said, I used my elemental affinity to make the fires hotter while my kajbunshans helped speed the process up and then I also used my wind to help sharpen them to the point that they could slice through steel, I figured for a test you should see my best. 
Normally I won't make them as sharp since people could hurt themselves with them if they think they are normal. Dustin nods and said, I think I am going to like having you around. Since you're done and I don't want to waste my material yet to get started making them all why don't you grab a broom and clean up the store. Naruto walks over and grabs the broom and starts sweeping while Dustin retrieves the weapons and shakes his head at the craftsmanship and sets them up on a display counter and makes a sign saying, New Legend Killer Weapons, 50 for matching set. Naruto smiles and thought, Thanks Sensei, you teaching me how to repair the Zords sure comes in handy, as he continues to sweep. A few hours later Naruto was sweeping the dirt off the front sidewalk when he heard, Yes, the mysterious Mons youth burns brightly and shook his head recognizing the voice. As he looked up he saw Team Guy walking toward the Hokage Tower and he continued to sweep when Tenten said, Hey you, what are you doing sweeping in front of my family store? Naruto looked up and Lee's eyes got wide and said, I work here miss. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello Lee, it's good to see you again, in a kind voice. Lee walked over and hugged Naruto and shouted, Naruto-kun, it's been a while since I seen you. Your youthfulness is burning brightly. Naruto winced and said, Lee, that's one. Making everyone look at him questionably. Lee shouts, but Naruto-kun, I have not seen your flames of youth burning in nearly two years. Naruto said warningly, that's too Lee, no more youth speeches and quit being so loud. Lee shouted, but Naruto-kun, youth is, and was cut off as he was blown into the air and started to fly in a mini funnel cloud that would not touch down and he started to scream, okay, okay, I am sorry Naruto-kun, please stop. Naruto said, not until you agree to shut up about youth and quiet down, making everyone wide-eyed. Sasuke who had been looking for Naruto walks up after seeing Naruto pick Lee into the air still holding the broom in his hand never making hand signs and Sasuke said, fight me. Naruto ignored him and Lee said, Okay deal Naruto-kun, I swear on my honor to stop screaming about youth, now stop before I throw up. Sasuke is pissed Naruto ignores him and he grabs Naruto by the arm and turned him around and said, Fight me, now. Naruto breaks his concentration on Lee who is about 20 feet in the air and he falls on top of Sasuke and he is looking really pale. He opens his mouth and pukes all over Sasuke and Naruto said, I would Sasuke but at the moment you stink, making those who are not sick from seeing that happen snicker at Sasuke misfortune. Sasuke gets up and storms off as his honor has taken a hit. Naruto turns and said, Now Lee, as I was saying it's good to see you Aegean. Lee gets up and his color returns and said in a calm voice, It's good to see you Aegean. How sensei? Naruto eyes looked down and said, He passed away Lee. Lee looked down Aegean and Tenten asked, so Lee, are you going to introduce us to your friend? Lee said, Sorry about that, Neji, Gazen C, Tenten, this is Naruto Na. Naruto cuts him off and said, Just Naruto, Lee. Just Naruto. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I am afraid I must get back to work so I can catch up with you Aegean later Lee. Lee nods and said, It good to have you back and thanks for earlier. Naruto smirked and said, No problem. You know me. Lee leaves with his team and Dustin walks out and said, So you and Lee know each other huh? Naruto said, Yeah, he trained with me and Sensei for a while because Sensei thought it would do me good to interact with other people since I hardly went to any towns or anything. My Sensei ran into him when he came to make a progress report on me. Dustin nods and said, Well finish cleaning up and call it a day. We close in 10 minutes anyways. Naruto nods and gets back to work. As Team Guy were walking through town Guy asked, So Lee, who is this man you call Sensei and who is your friend? As everyone looks at Lee. Lee said, That was Naruto-kun, our Sensei was a man who trained Naruto-kun since birth and allowed me to learn a little about his way of fighting in return I befriended Naruto-kun. I don't use what he taught me because it's like the lotus, it's not meant to be used unless certain things happen. Guy said, how come you never told me about him before? Lee said, out of honor for him sensei. When I first met him I had let my temper get the best of me and beat three kids my age enough to send them to the hospital. He taught me how to use my anger wisely and not get the better of me. If it was not for him I would not be the person I am today, solemnly. 
Everyone was stunned at having never heard or seen Lee like how he described and Tenten asked, so what's Naruto's story? You started to say more to his name but he stopped you. Why, and what did you thank him for earlier for? Lee said, Naruto-kun is a very private person. If he wishes for you to know something he will tell you. As for that, let's just say that is a running story for us. I won't betray my first real friend trust. Even to my teammates. As they walked into the Hokage Tower. Neji said, I don't know who he is but you have both quitted down and stopped acting like guy so I am impressed. Lee said, Tenten, if you don't mind can I come by and talk to Naruto-kun when we get done here. I would like to catch up with him. Looking at her. Tenten said, sure. As they walked into the Hokage's office. The third looked up and said, ah, team nine, how was your mission? Guy said, it started off bad but a mysterious person wearing white armor appeared and saved Tenten from a surprise attack and then took out the bandits quickly with some weird long-range weapon. The third nods and said, I see, it was probably him then. Tenten asked, who Hokagasama? He left before we got a chance to say thanks. The third said, I am sorry, it's a secret and only myself know but I will pass your thanks on to him when I see him Aegean. Lee remains quiet and the third asked, are you feeling okay Lee, you seem quiet. Lee starts to say something when Guy said, Lee youthful friend Naruto just returned to the village and he learned a former sensei of his passed away. The third was wide eyed and said, you trained with Naruto and him. Lee said, yes but only for a short period of time sir. I know what you're asking about but I did not go as far as Naruto-kun has but I could if I chose to since Naruto-kun is now the master of it no doubt. The third nods and said, well if you do let me know so I can put it in your file. Lee said, I will Hokagasama but I doubt I will. The reason I did not finish it was I made a mistake that nearly cost Naruto-kun and Sensei their lives. I did not feel at the time I was worthy of completing what they were teaching me and now I don't know. The third said, very well, I will trust your judgment. Is there anything else I should know? Tenten asked, um, I have a question about Naruto. Is there anything I should know about him since he is working at my family store? The third said, I am sorry but all information on Naruto is an S-class village secret and only he is allowed to reveal anything but I will tell you he is no threat or anything if you're worried about that. Tenten nods and said, thank you anyways. The third said, well, good job on your mission and I will have your pay for you tomorrow. Enjoy your evening. Team Guy left the office and Lee walked beside Tenten quietly and Tenten asked, what was that about back there Lee? Something is not adding up with what I know about you and it's bothering me. What did you mean you almost cost them their lives? Lee sighed and said, Tenten, all I will say is that at one time the training was in a prison I guess you could describe it and I was tricked into letting a prisoner go. The prisoner would have killed both of them had they been a half a step slower. I blame myself for being gullible at the time and believing the criminal. It was stupid and they both forgave me for it but I did not feel right about it. A voice said, but as you said Lee, you were gullible because you were only 12 years old then. You're 15 now Lee and have more experience and should not keep blaming yourself. Making both look and see Naruto standing on a tree branch above them. Lee said, I see the wind is still your ally. So what's up? Naruto reached into his pocket and pulled out a 3 inch wide bracelet and tossed it to Lee and said, Sensei wanted me to give that to you and said we are both all that is left of the legacy. We must set an example for those who follow and make sure to continue what was started. Lee looked at it and said, but I am not worthy. Naruto said, what's the first lesson Sensei taught you Lee? Lee looked down and said, believe in yourself and your allies. Even if you make a mistake you must move on and strive to ensure peace for those you protect. Naruto said, and you have Lee. That guy tricked you because you trust people. Now that you learned the lesson Lee trust yourself. Lee smiled and said, fine, you win, as he slipped it on his right arm and it clicked. Tenten asked, what is that thing? Naruto looked at her and said, it's a family heirloom of senses. It shows that we are trained in the arts of the old ways. Tenten sighed and said, you're confusing, you know that. Naruto said, how about a demonstration then to help you understand? Tenten said, fine, 
Naruto jumped down and put his hand on both of Thier's shoulders and the wind picked up and they were gone. Tenten blinked and found herself in her team's training ground and asked, so what do we do and how did you know which training field was ours? Naruto smirked and said, I have my ways. Attack me with everything you got. You won't be able to touch me. Lee said, good luck, and jumped up into a tree. Tenten said, fine and pulled out two scrolls and went through some hand signs before shouting, Twin Rising Dragon, and the two scroll opened and she jumped in the air and started to throw weapons at Naruto who merely looked at her and crossed his arms. Tenten aim was as true as ever however what happened next was something she never expected, her weapons started to spin around him and gain speed and then she blinked and the weapons coming down at him were suddenly being targeted by the weapons that had slingshot around Naruto. She kept it going until she noticed only two more kuniyas were circling Naruto but they were moving incredibly fast. She blinked and the next moment both her scrolls had been blasted back with a kuniya impaling both. Naruto suddenly vanished in a paren next to her as she free falled toward the ground, unable to move and Naruto sent four jabs to her body. One to both shoulders and one to both hips. When she hit the ground she was unable to move and Naruto said, that is what I can do. The old ways is the most true form of hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the galaxy. It can't be copied because you don't use chakra. Instead you use your body own physical strength to target your enemy and either disable the ability to move or kill them with a touch. There are 16 places on the human body that one single glancing blow in this style can kill you. Tenten asked, how did you block my weapons like that? It's impossible to do that. Naruto snorts and said, no. It's what happens when you master a nature affinity to the point I have. To me, wind is part of me and I can use it as a defense or an attack. You have never faced someone who uses wind jutsu or you would know normal weapons don't work on them. Tenten was silent and Lee jumped down and said, I see you're as good as ever Naruto-kun. So what are you going to do now? Naruto sighs and picks Tenten up bridal style as she squeaks and said, Well, I guess since she won't be able to walk or move her arms for at least two hours I will take her back to her house and then get ready to go to bed since I have a busy day tomorrow. Lee asked, where will you be staying at Naruto? Naruto said, I am actually living at the weapon shop, CYA, as he left in a swirl of wind. Lee looked down at his wrist at the object and said, I won't make the same mistake again as he started walked back toward the village only to stop and close his eyes and phased out of view a few moments and appeared back in the same spot holding all of Tenten's weapons and scrolls she left. Just then a kajbunshin of Naruto appeared and Lee said, you're welcome. The clone said, thanks Lee and welcome back, as he took them and left in a wind shushin. Naruto and Tenten appeared in front of the store and Tenten said, go to the back door. The front will be locked now. Naruto nods and walks to the back still carring her and Dustin is sitting there whittling and he blinked and said, now this is an unexpected surprise. To what do I owe the honor of you returning my daughter like this? Tenten blushed as her dad shot her a smirk and Naruto said, I gave her a demonstration of what happens to a weapon user against a wind user. She should be able to walk in a few hours but for now she can't. Dustin said, well go ahead and take her on in and take her to her room. She will tell you where. Naruto nods and walked in and Dustin thought, this could get interesting a eh, Minato, as he looked up at the sky. Just then a clone appeared holding weapons and it said, these are hers, as it went up in smoke. Naruto followed Tenten's directions and she said as he set her in a chair in her room, thanks, now get out. Naruto bowed and said, of course master, in a mocking tone and left the room before Tenten could retort. He found a note on the door across from Tenten's and it read. This is your room Naruto, bathrooms down the hall at the end. Naruto smirked and walked into his room and saw a simple bed and dresser and thought, well this place will do for now, as he went to bed. Tenten laid on her bed for a little while after she could get out of the chair and working out the kinks in her muscles. It was around 9 p.m. now and she suddenly heard the sound of a soft loving music coming from above her home. She got up and walked out into the hallway and down to where the stairs lead to the roof and climbed them quietly as the sound got louder the closer she got. She listened to the music as she finally made it to the door and carefully opened the door to the roof. When she got on the roof she saw Naruto sitting on the ledge of the roof playing a two feet long silver flute. 
He had his back to her and she stood there and listened to the sound. It was a sad but lovely tune and she started to turn to go back inside when Naruto stoked and said, If you want you can come sit by me and listen. I don't mind. As he put the flute back to his mouth and started to play never turning around. Tenton was stunned he knew she was there and decided to listen some more so she walked over and was surprised when a warm breeze blew over her removing the cold she was slightly feeling from the night air. She sat down beside him as he started to play another tune but stopped and said, if you really want to appreciate the music and get a surprise, close your eyes and listen. I promise you will like it. Tenton looked at him as he closed his eyes and started to play Aegean and she closed her eyes listening and then suddenly she saw a light fill her eyes as they were closed and then she could see around her but it was not the sight of Konoha. Instead it was the sight from a flying bird looking over a beautiful valley with a snow top mountain on both sides. She gasped as the music carried her through the air as she could see everything with perfect clarity. She was amazed and did not realize it but she had moved closer to Naruto and had now laid her head on his shoulder as he continued to play. She slowly found herself falling asleep dreaming of flying through the air like a bird, totally free and worry-free. Some time later Naruto stopped playing and smiled to Tenten as she lightly slept in a restful sleep and said, You know I won't hurt her as he turned to look at Dustin leaning Ajons the wall that housed the door to go back inside. Dustin said, I know, I just came to listen to the music myself. It's been years since Konoha has been blessed with a dream melody. Can you bring her in or do you need some help? Naruto put the flute in his shirt and said, I got her, as he waved his arm and a gentle breeze picked her up where he could carry her bridal style. Dustin said, You really do have a wind affinity, Hanami. Naruto shook his head stopping him and said, Just Naruto. I don't want people sucking up to me because of my father. Dustin nods and said, I understand though I do have to question one thing. What are your intentions toward my daughter? Naruto walked over and felt Tenten lean into the crick in his neck and said, For now just friends. Besides my sensei Lee was the only other person on this planet I ever met before I returned. I don't have many friends and I never met a human female before so I really don't know what to expect. Dustin asked, why do you keep making references like you've been on another planet or something? Naruto sighed and said, nothing, just ramblings of a tired soul is all. I guess all those years of training put me at a loss for social skills. Shall we go in, it's going to rain tonight. Dustin looked at the sky and said, there's not a cloud in the sky, what makes you sure it's going to rain? Naruto smiled and said, the wind told me, as he walked by Dustin down the stairs to Tenton's room and carefully put her in bed before covering her up and leaving. Tenton opened her eyes and thought, so he's never really knew anyone beside Lee and his sensei huh? I am sure glad guy sensei made us learn to awake from any motion around us. I wonder what dad was going to say when he said Nami. She then turned over and fell back into a blissful sleep. Naruto walked into his room and laid back down hoping to fall asleep with another nightmare. Flash to dream, Naruto was in his white ranger outfit standing beside Tommy who said, Naruto, this is a trap, go before they capture you as well. My time is already over but you must continue the legacy. Naruto looked around and saw 100 talons and said, but sensei, you will die. I can still help. Tommy grabbed Naruto's wrist as he said, power down, and quickly slipped his morpher into Naruto's hand and said, Alpha, teleport now. And Naruto instantly teleported with a white beam as the last thing he saw was his sensei receive a sword in the back from the leader of the Talons, Raven. Like the Talons he was a bird-like man who instead of all black like crows and ravens was instead pure red. He was the creature who secured Omega to the next world the Biju found to have the proper power source. End of dream, Naruto bolted up in bed and looked around calming himself down and said, I will not let his memory die. I will stop Omega once and for all, as he got up since it was already 5 am. Naruto got ready for the day and heads downstairs to where the forge, shop and living kitchen area was and smelled breakfast being cooked so he walked into TH kitchen and saw Tenton wearing a pair of black biker short and a loose Chinese shirt dancing to some song she was singing herself and Naruto smirked since he knew the song and pulled out his flute and began to play startling Tenton who jumped and turned around and said, don't scare me like that. 
Naruto ignored her playing the next part of the song and she smiled and continued to sing as she went back to cooking. When she finished cooking Naruto put his flute away and walked over and helped her set the stuff on the table and looked around and asked, do you have any tea? Tenton said, yes though the coffee pot is already full of coffee. Dad doesn't like tea in the mornings. Naruto said, that's all right, I can just drink water then. Tenton asked, why don't you just drink some coffee? It's fresh and hot. Naruto scratched the back of his head and mumbled something and Tenton asked, what? Naruto said, it puts me to sleep. Caffeine actually puts me to sleep so I usually drink something with very little of it in it or none at all. As he looked down. Tenton said, I see, that's unusual but not unheard of. How about a glass of milk? Naruto smiled and said, sure, that will work. Tenton walked over to the fridge and got it out and poured Naruto a glass and Naruto said, so, how did you sleep last night? Tenton said, pretty good actually. What exactly was that dream I had? She suddenly stiffened when she felt a cool breeze blow across her back and a warm breeze caress her cheek and Naruto said, that is the wind. You dreamed as if you were the spirit of the wind and flowing freely and wherever you wished to blow, as he smiled a true smile to her. Tenton felt the wind leave and asked, how do you do that? Naruto asked, do what? Tenton said, control the wind like that and in our fight yesterday and last night. Now that I think about it you made that warm wind blow over me to make it not so cool. How can you do that? Naruto looked into her eyes for a moment and said, I am one with the wind. It's a part of me and we support each other to the point that it's basically automatically for me. It's part of my training I went through. Tenton was quiet and said, so you could teach me to control the wind. Naruto looked at her and said, walk for me a moment. Tenton blinked and asked, what? Naruto sighed and said, trust me, just walk to the door and back and I will tell you if I can teach you to control the wind. Tenton blinked and got up walking over to the door and back Aegean and sat down and asked, so did you like what you see? Naruto smiled and said, you're a water type, not a wind type so I can't teach you wind. Tenton asked, what makes you say that? Naruto held out his hand and wisp of wind surrounded it and he said, see this. Wind is basically chaos and power. Completely random and unpredictable. Now you are a water type. You moves are smooth and elegant, gentle and controlled or raging and reserved. I can tell by the way you move and control yourself that you are a water type. Tenton looked down and said, that's not fair, I wish I could control it like you do. Naruto scratched his chin and looked at her and asked, when's your next team meeting? Tenton said, tomorrow. Guy Sensei gave us the day off since we just got back from one. Naruto was about to say something but stopped and sighed as he got up and walked toward the furnace creating a clone to start cleaning the table as he left the room. Tenton blinked and thought, what just happened? Naruto quickly created a bunch of kajbunshins and had them start on making the kuniya and shurikens that he was hired to make. Dustin came downstairs and saw his daughter had a look of questioning on her face and he asked, what's wrong dear? Tenton looked at her dad and said, well, I am not sure. I was talking one moment with Naruto and then the next he quickly got up and left the room heading for the forge. He was telling me one moment about how I was a water type and he was a wind type and I though the way he was talking he might have been willing to teach me to control water like he does wind but then all of a sudden he got this look and quickly left. I don't understand. Dustin smiled and said, I do. Tenton asked, what is it then? Dustin said, sorry dear, you will have to find out on your own. Sounds like he's in the forge room, as he walked over and poured himself a cup of coffee. Tenton sighed and took her a bite to eat and blinked as she looked at where Naruto plate was and thought, I never saw him eat. I wonder what he looks like under that mask, as she noticed the plate that the clones had cleaned off the table had no food on it. The clone saw her look and said, when you were walking for him is when he was eating as it went up in smoke shocking Tenton. Tenton was pale and said, did he read my mind? Dustin burst out laughing and said, no, the look on your face was enough to figure out by simple observation what you were thinking. Naruto smiled in the forge as the clone's memories came back to him but they stopped when he remembered what his sensei said. Flashback, 
A six-year-old Naruto was panting as Tommy stood before him in a fighting stance waiting for Naruto to recover and said, Naruto, I want you to remember that you are the last ranger. I don't want you to be the last though so promise me that you will find yourself a team and led them to save the galaxy as I have. Naruto said, but Sensei, why should I find a team when you said it's the most painful thing ever to see your team die? Tommy got out of his fighting stance and said, it is but you must remember that a single chopstick can be broken easily but many of them can hold together to support each other and endure lots more. Naruto said, I understand. So I need to go out and find skilled people and train them and pick the ones who are the best at the training. Tommy sighed and said, No Naruto. The lessons I teach you are not to be shown to anyone. Remember the Power Rangers are a symbol of hope to the universe. If they see you as a man then that symbol is demonished. You have to keep your identity hidden from everyone except those you trust with your life. Those you trust with your life are the ones you should make as your team. Naruto stood up and said, I understand sensei, only show my true skills to my team and only choose a team I can trust with my life. Tommy sighed and said, something like that, you will have to figure it out on your own someday since you are my legacy. End flashback, Naruto thought, no, I can't teach her because I can't trust her with my life. I just met her and I don't know what it is but I don't feel right around her. She gets in under my guard too easily. I can't trust her with my life because I can't protect myself from her if she becomes an enemy. I must distance myself from her. As he continued to work. After he made around 200 he stopped and looked at the wall and said, Well I got time to take a shower before I have to meet my team. Seeing it was already 10 am. Naruto left and quickly got a change of cloths that looked exactly the same as the ones he had on except these had a white cloak and went to the bathroom and took a shower and got ready. When he came downstairs he saw Tenten sitting behind the counter and she said, So, do you have anything else besides those white cloths like that? Naruto stopped and said, I guess you can call it a tradition. White always reminds me of the wind and since you know, I am the wind I only like to wear white. I got to go, got to meet my team. Tenten said, Wait, can I walk with you? Naruto grimaced a moment and then his knuckles hurt from phantom pain. Flashback slap naruto screamed and asked what the hell was that for sensei as he rubbed his swollen hand from the ruler that just got smacked across it tommy said simple you are to be a well-respected and mannered individual you can't just go around being a loudmouth idiot naruto said but what's the big deal you just asked me what i would do if someone asked me to walk with them and i said i would not what's the big deal slap tommy said the big deal is you have to be polite to people. Remember or I will slap your hand Aegean. End flashback. Naruto rubbed his hand and said, Sure. Tenten smiled and said, Great, just let me tell dad. As she walked to the back. A few moments later she walked back and Dustin was following her and said, You kids have fun. As he sat down behind the counter. Naruto smiled and said, Sure thing as he held the door open for Tenten as she walked out and he followed her. Dustin watched them start to walk away and thought, your kid is a good kid Minato but his social skills are very lacking, perhaps my daughter can help your son over that. They do make a cute couple. Naruto walked beside Tenten shivered a little and she said, man, I can't believe that it's so cold here lately. It's looking like winter is going to come early this year or something as she rubbed her arms avoiding a puddle of water on the road from the early morning shower. Naruto looked at her and took his cloak off and put it on her shoulders and said, it's not much but it should help warm you up some. Tenden smiled and said, thanks. As she pulled it closer to it and felt the material and blinked and looked at it and Naruto said, it's made from a special, weather-resistant material from a place far away. It can be hit with a strong fire jutsu and not even be touched. Tenden said, how did you, never mind, I never seen anything like this before, it feels like silk but also something else, Naruto said, yeah, it's quite unique and hard to come by, I was lucky to be able to get it, Tenten nods and asked, so who are your teammates, Naruto said, the Uchiha and some pink haired fangirl named Sakura, Tenten whistled and said, sucks to be you, Naruto nods and said, 
We also have Kakashi as our sensei and the test I am going to take today is about teamwork and I can already tell the other two will fail it. Tenna blinked and said, you already know what the test is supposed to be about. That's unbelievable, most don't figure it out until the backup test. Naruto smiled and said, well I was trained rather well, isn't that right Lee? As he stopped and looked on the roof above them and saw Lee standing there but instead of his usual green outfit he was wearing a pair of black pants and a yellow shirt and his hair had also been cut to look normal though short and he jumped down to land beside Naruto and Tenten. Tenten gaped and said, you're not wearing spandex. Lee ignoring her gaping said, no, I am not. So where are you both heading to? Naruto said, I got to take the damn bell test of Kakashi with my team. Tenten here asked if she could walk with me. What about you? I see you're back to the tradition. As he looked at the cloths. Lee smiled and said, Yeah, I figure if I am going to go back to what sensei showed us then I might as well dress like it also. I was wondering, where was he laid down at? Naruto smiled a sad smile and said, I put his body beside his wife's. I figured it would be the way he would want it. Alpha wants you to came see him when you get a chance. Lee nods and said, all right, I guess since we're off today I might as well. CYA my old friend. As he jumped to the roof but stopped and said, keep him out of trouble Tenton, as he jumped away. Tenton looked where he was gone and said, I believe you are a miracle worker. Not only have you gotten Lee to talk normal, quit wearing spandex, get a haircut that's normal but he also carried on a conversation without mentioning the word youth one time. Naruto started to walk Aegean and said, no, that's just the real Lee. He's just never had a reason to show the real him, as he picked up his pace to get a little ahead of her. Tenten was about to stop when he speeded up and had to jog a little to catch him. As she finally caught up with him they were approaching the memorial stone training ground and Tenten sighed and said, I guess I should leave. Naruto said, you don't have to. I mean Kakashi is in the tree above the two idiots and you could cheer for me and wish me luck. Tenten laughs and said, you're sure conceited. You think I like you or something. Naruto said, well, you have been spending a lot of time following me and you were wearing my coat. Tenten blushed and punched him in the arm and Naruto laughs and said, just kidding but I don't mind you staying. This won't take long and since I am free after this I can take you out for lunch. Tenten smiled and said, sure, as she followed him onto the field. Sakura stood up and screamed, you're late. Naruto said, well, the hero always shows up at the last moment and since I am the hero and you're just some damsel in distress I say I am right on time. Don't you agree Kakashi sensei? Making both Sakura and Sasuke look around. Sasuke said, he's not here Dobi. Naruto snorts whipping his arm out and a blade of wind shoots out and cuts the tree limb Kakashi was sitting on and he falls down landing beside Sasuke still reading his book. Kakashi said, you know you could have waited till I finished the page. So who's your girlfriend? Naruto said, she's Tenten and I work for her dad and her. She just following me to make sure I don't get lost in town so she can stay while we do this little test. After all several chopsticks are stronger than one. Don't you agree sensei? Making Kakashi I go big for a moment and said, I see. Okay, she can stay but she can't get in the way. By the way is your shadow with you? Naruto said, no, he's been following me since we left her shop this morning. I wasn't for sure if he was a local or not. Kakashi nods and disappears in a swirl of leaves and Naruto leaves in a swirl of wind at the exact moment and the sound of metal piercing flesh was heard and everyone turns and sees Kakashi holding a kunai to a mon's neck and Naruto has one in each of the mon's hands stopping him from reaching the sword on his side. Everyone was wide-eyed and stunned and Kakashi asked, who are you and what are you doing in Konoha? The man was around 5 feet 5 and had brown hair and brown eyes making him look like a normal person and he said, I was trying to find someone. Kakashi asked, who are you trying to find, still holding the kunai to the guy's neck. The man said, I am trying to find the Jinchiriki for the Kayubi no Kitsune. Making Kakashi flinch and Naruto narrowed his eyes as he walked around to look at the mon's face and then looked at the mon's hand where he stabbed and noticed it was not bleeding and asked, why do you want to know where that person is? The man said, my master is looking for him with an offer. Naruto looked at the man hard and said, 
I know who you look for but I will only answer if you tell me who your master is. The man said, why would I tell a ranger? Naruto said, wrong answer. As he flung his wrist like he did before when Kakashi was in the tree but the blade of wind shot through the mon's chest and he burst into a pile of feathers however the man had lunged forward and cut Naruto across the chest making him bleed with a couple of foot long cuts and Naruto said, shit, a talon, as he started to look around egoring the wound. Kakashi said, friends of yours, as he also looked around also trying to figure out where or what that person was and then looked at Naruto chest where his was still bleeding. Naruto said, yeah and the worst kind, I need to speak with the Hokage after this test, shit just got more complicated and don't look for the body, I killed him and that's why feathers are everywhere, as he stopped looking around and sighed as he saw the blood covering his shirt. Kakashi asked, can it wait till then, I mean you're injured and the Hokage needs to know about this, as he watched Naruto start taking his shirt off and blinked as Naruto wiped the shirt across where the blood was shown to be coming out but they had already healed and uncut skin was shown. Naruto said, yeah, I know but as you can see I heal fast and odds are he was alone so it's nothing to worry about for the moment though. As he reached the bracklet on his arm and tapped a seal on it and said, Alpha, Talons in Konoha, do a sweep for me and let me know if you detect anything. As he tapped at Aegean and said, all right let's get this show started, as he walked back over to the rest of the genins. Tenten was looking at Naruto as he was cut and was worried for him but after he pulled his shirt off and wiped it and showed uncut skin she blinked and then saw on his back what looked like three red claw marks going all the way from his shoulder to his lower hip on the opposite side. When he turned around she saw the same wounds matching the one on his back as he started walking back over and since she was sitting beside the memorial stone he laid his shirt on the ground by it and said, don't worry. I am all right. As he walked back over to Kakashi. Sakura brain finally caught up and she screamed and said, you killed him, what the hell is going on and why are you acting like it's no big deal sensei? He's a murderer. Everyone's sweat dropped and Naruto said, your mother dropped you on your head a lot when you were a child. Didn't she? Sakura screeches and leaps for Naruto only to be blown into a tree by a strong gust of wind. Sasuke demanded, what the hell is going on here? What did that man mean by a jinchuriki of Kayubi? Everyone knows Kayubi died when he attacked the village. Sakura said, That's right, the Yandaimi, Minato Namikaze killed it on October 10th, 14 years ago so how can you know someone who was a jinkarite or whatever the hell he called it? Tenten blinked and thought, Namikaze, could that be what dad and Lee both started to say? Hum. Naruto ignored her and said, So, what's this test? Sasuke said, don't ignore me, I want answers, where did you get your power from? Naruto said, take some my doll, your mood swings are getting to me. Kakashi sighed and looked at the feathers blow away wondering who that was and walked back over as he also noticed the marks but realized instantly what they were having seen wounds like that himself after the Kyubi attack and said, now if you would Ms. Tenten please remain sitting over there so I can give the test. Tenten said, sure. I want to see what a cool hip rival is all about. Kakashi paled and looked at Tenten Aegean and said, You just had to pick one of Guy's students to work for, didn't you? Naruto smirked and Kakashi pulled out two bells and said, All right. The test is simple there are two bells. You must retrieve the bells from me to succeed. The one who does not get a bell fails and will be tied up not to eat and be sent back to the academy. Does everyone understand? Naruto said, that reminds me, you're a great cook Tenten, making her blush and everyone else sweat drops. Sakura said, Kakashi told us not to eat baka. Naruto smirked and said, sure, sure, tell me, have you heard of looking underneath the underneath or what? I mean how long will three hungry genins who got up early for a habitually late junin sensei actually be? Kakashi said, you're purposely going to ruin my fun, aren't you? Naruto said, whatever do you mean sensei, innocently. Kakashi sighed and said, all right, you have until noon to get the bell from me. Come at me with the intent to kill or you have no chance to succeed. Naruto blinked and asked, if I kill you do I still pass? Kakashi gave him a deadpan look and said, I admit your skills might be high from dealing with whoever that was a moment ago but I doubt you can do anything to me. Anyways, ready, set, go. 
Sakura and Sasuke jumped into the woods and Naruto stood there as he started to stretch and move giving Tenten a good look as his body and she thought, no one is supposed to have a body that well developed. It's like a god or something, what the hell, where did that come from? Hum, what was that word the guy used? Ranger, that's it, what is a ranger? As she shook her head. Kakashi said, compared to the others you're a little weird. Naruto said, compared to the others I got blood on my hands. You ready? Kakashi not expecting an answer like that though he saw what Naruto claimed to be a kill could not tell if it was a lie or not nods and gets in his own stance waiting to see what Naruto could do. Naruto phased out of view and appeared in front of Kakashi going for a throat shot only for Kakashi to dodge and then jump over the leg sweep and lean back from the standing one arm leg kick and receive a cut on his chest from wind chakra on the bottom of Naruto feet as he faked the kick. Kakashi jumps back and looks at the wound and said, okay, maybe I underestimated you, as he pulls up his hiate uncovering his Sharingan. In the bushes Sasuke gets wide eyed and thinks, Sharingan, but how? Sakura thinks, what's that thing? Naruto stands up and said, all right, let's see how you deal with this, as he reaches into his weapon pouch and pulls out his, flute making everyone blink. Tenten thinks, what is he going to do now? A flute is not a weapon. As Naruto starts to play he suddenly disappears from view and Kakashi said, I see, Genjutsu, as he looks around trying to find Naruto as he still hears the music but it's coming from everywhere. He then puts his hands in a ram seal and try to dispel it and it fails. He then bit his lip and it also fails. The music goes from a soft melody to an action paced tempo and suddenly birds made out of wind start flying toward Kakashi making him do hand signs and said, Phoenix Fireball Jutsu, as he breaths out several fireballs hitting the birds setting them on fire but instead of destroying them or stopping them like he planned the ten birds form together to make one bird about five feet tall that was still on fire reminding Kakashi of the legendary phoenix itself. Acting quickly he does hand signs and sinks into the ground as the bird hits the spot Kakashi was in before it explodes making a fifteen foot wide crater. Naruto stops playing music and appears beside Sakura and asked, have you figured out my clues yet? Sakura jumps and screams as she had not noticed him arriving and screamed, Don't scare me you idiot. What are you talking about? Naruto sighed and said, Teamwork you dits. As he slapped her on the back and jumped away from her heading toward Sasuke who had already fought Kakashi and got buried. Naruto landed in front of Sasuke and did some hand signs and a small tornado pulled Sasuke out of the hole and Naruto said, It's teamwork Sasuke. We have to work as a team. Sasuke said. I don't need you. As he storms past Naruto and Naruto slaps him on the back also and then the alarm goes off. Naruto leaves in a swirl of wind and appears beside Tenten and said. They're screwed. As he sat down beside her. Kakashi said. Yes, they are. From above the Naruto and Tenten as he was reading his book. Tenten asked. So when are you going to give Kakashi back the bells Naruto? making Kakashi wide-eye looking down and thinks, when did he get them? As if answering the unasked question Naruto said, when I cut your chest my foot moved just enough to cut the ropes holding the bells and I gave them to both Sir Dipshit and Ditsy. Kakashi said, well you pass. Here comes the other two idiots. As he puts his book away and jumps down. Sakura was fawning over Sasuke and said, I bet that idiot Naruto got in your way Sasuke. That's why you did not get a bell. And Kakashi said, well only one of you should be a ninja and that is Naruto. Both of you should just quit being a ninja altogether. Naruto said, hey Kakashi, if they fail can I transfer to an existing team or something? Kakashi smiled behind his mask seeing Naruto game and said, yeah, I can put you on the same team as your girlfriend. Tenten said, hey, I am not his girlfriend. Kakashi said, not yet as he turned back to his students and blocks a kunai strike from Sasuke while also ignoring Tenten gawking and he disappears behind Sasuke and said, Konoha secret taijutsu, 1000 years of death, as he shoves his fingers up Sasuke ass. Naruto and Tenten both burst out laughing and Sakura ran over to where Sasuke was and stopped as she saw Sasuke had his pants around his knees and he was trying to pull his boxers back out of his ass. She blushes and asked, do you need a hand? Tenten said, no, I think Shitstain there can handle it pinky, as she tries to hold her laughter and Sakura said, 
Shut up bitch. You're just jealous you can't have him. Now there are a few things in this world that are given. Woman like Tenton are classified on one page. It reads as follows. In the event you call said person a fangirl, insult her skills as a ninja, treat her as if she was a fangirl, call her a jealous from a fangirl point of view, try and hurt those she cares about or do anything that could be even remotely related to the above mentions of fangirl tendency, not being a professional in said profession, or anything with indirect relations to said items your fate is sealed. You're screwed, Tenton got up and said, why don't you say that to my face you pink-haired slut? Kakashi puts his book away and pulls out a scroll and unseals a bucket of popcorn. Naruto pulls out a scroll and unseals a camcorder and Kakashi blinks and said, I want a copy of that. Naruto nods and said, aren't you going to save your student? Kakashi said, she's not my student yet so no. Naruto shrugs and said, all right, not my problem. While this was going on Tenten stood in front of Sakura who turned and said, you heard me Princess Leah, that hairstyle went out with the Daisy Dukes you have on. Tell me, have you had so many men run through them that you had to install a waiting line? Quote, Naruto blinked and looked smiling as he sets back upright wondering how the hell he missed that about the Daisy Dukes but the next line pissed him off. Tenten said, that's it, you die, as she charged Sakura who had her hands on the side of her hips. Tenten got almost to Sakura when Sakura went to pooch her in the face. Tenten ducked under it doing a leg sweep that Sakura jumped over but Tenten did a vertical handspring putting both feet under Sakura chin and sending her into the air. Naruto blinked and looked closer instead of jokingly like he had before. Tenten stood on both her hands launching herself into the air and did a somersault in the air and dropped a hell drop on Sakura's stomach as she fell back to the ground coughing up blood and Kakashi said, that's enough. Tenten stood up and said, now that's what a Kanauchi is. As she turned to Naruto who was clapping and said, I am impressed. I thought you were a weapon user and would have been weak in taijutsu. Tenten said, with a sensei like guy you don't have the luxury of being weak in taijutsu. Kakashi said, well Sasuke, I want you to take Sakura to the hospital. Naruto, you need to come with me to see the Hokage. Meet here tomorrow at 9 am to start missions. Sasuke picked Sakura up and took her away. Tenten said, well I guess lunch is postponed. Naruto said, yes but how about you meet me on the Hokage mountain at say 2 this afternoon and I can make it up to you but don't eat a big lunch. I want to talk to you about something. Tenten said, sure, sounds fun, as she turned and started to walk away. Naruto waited until she was out of sight and Sasuke and Sakura were gone and he turned to Kakashi and said, well I guess we can go Kakashi, as he left in a swirl of wind and Kakashi and leaves. They both appeared in the Hokage office and there were several people there as well and the Hokage said, well Naruto, it's good to see you Aegean but I am afraid this meeting is for Junins only. Kakashi said, sorry Hokage-sama but we had an intruder in the village and Naruto has information on the intruder so I believe you should see him. The Hokage said, I see. Could you all please leave for a moment while I get to the bottom of this? I will call you back in a few moments. Naruto saw Guy and said, Um, pardon me Hokage-sama but could Guy stay as well? Guy stopped and the Hokage said, Very well. The rest of you besides Kakashi and Guy may wait in the lobby. After a few moments the door was closed and Naruto fell to his knees shocking everyone and he said, I am alright, I need a moment to flush the poison out of my system as he was covered with chakra that seemed to glow blue and white and then faded and he slowly stood up and took a seat. Kakashi said, Naruto, why didn't you tell me that he had poison? Naruto said, with everyone who was there I couldn't tell too much without raising even more suspicion. That's why I wanted Tenten to stay also because if she would have left he could have taken her. The Hokage asked, is there any more danger to your life Naruto? Naruto said, no. My healing abilities stops most of it but I still had some that did not escape when he attacked. Guy asked, who attacked you Naruto? Naruto sighed and said, I guess if I am to tell you and have you understand you and Kakashi both need to know something about exactly who I am and where I have been. As Kakashi and the Hokage knows my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I am the son of the Yandaimi Hokage and I am also the former Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Guy was wide-eyed and the Hokage said, 
it's true, all of it and let him continue without question until the end. Guy nods and Naruto said, shortly after the sealing I was taken away from the village by my sensei. Even though he would never let me say it he was the closest thing to a father I have ever had. Yes I know who my birth father was and all and I have even seen a recording of him in his last few minutes but still that is not much to build a loving memory and life off of. Anyways back to the situation. For the past 14 years I have been trained to be what is called a power ranger. Kakashi eyes got wide remembering the man called Naruto that and Naruto said, I won't tell you much but the rangers were created to save the universe from evil creatures who wanted to enslave or destroy all life or both. There's more to it than that but the rangers were like a super police force for the galaxy and when I say galaxy I mean it. As hard as it is to believe I have been on over 45 different planets in my life already, making everyone wide-eyed. The Hokage said, I thought you were just staying in his base. Naruto said, Originally it was planned to but like I said, the rangers were like a police force for the galaxy and when we received calls for help we had to go and aid people. Now you all should know that not every planet has humans as the main species. Some have fish people lizards, and then there are some that are like birds. That man we killed Kakashi is called a Talon. Basically he's a mercenary who works for a creature known as Raven. Talons usually scout by themselves but when they want to kill they usually attack in groups. Fear claws are poisoned and they have the ability to turn into anyone they kill and it will be impossible to tell who they are unless you do two things. The first is to cut them. They don't bleed and the other thing is to upset them. If you do then they have feathers start showing up through the illusion they hide in. To kill them you have to puncture fear chest with either a weapon or force trauma. Any questions? Guy asked, what is this talon creature doing here? Naruto said, they were looking for the Kyubi. Since I was taken away so long ago and the Kyubi was removed they have no idea where to look for it. Kakashi asked, what exactly do they want with the Kyubi? Naruto sighed and looked at the Hokage who nods and said, the truth is simple. Fear Boss is actually the leader of the tailed demons. He is a powerful creature called Omega. The demons are sent from planet to planet stealing energy and storing it up to give to Omega to try and help him finish escaping from his prison. His mind is free and he can communicate with those under him but his body is still trapped. They want the Kyubi so they can go to the next planet with the other tailed beast are done collecting energy here before they destroy this planet, making everyone wide-eyed. The Hokage asked, when you say destroy the planet, what exactly do you mean? Naruto SATs down and said, when Omega leaves a planet he releases a poison into the air that kills everything on the planet. That's why there are only two rangers left. They fell into a trap where Omega sacrificed around 2000 of his minions to keep the rangers busy while he left the planet. Within an hour all life on the planet was dead. Kakashi asked, why does he do that? I mean if he is actually as dangerous as you say then why doesn't he just enslave everyone? Naruto said, Omega originally did from what I was told. It was on one of the planets that he held as slaves that the first rangers came from and originally imprisoned him. He is afraid that people will arise to free themselves from him again so he refuses to even accept slaves. The third asked, Naruto, if Omega knows there are rangers on this planet won't he just flee and release the virus on us like he did before. Naruto smiled and said, it's not that simple, Omega for all his power has one major problem. The cell that holds his body is slowly destroying it. Every time his energy drops more than 60% he starts losing more of his body and without a body his mind will soon die also so he has to have the biju collect the energy he needs to keep alive so he can't leave without them since it takes a lot out of him to leave a planet and go to the next planet so he won't leave them here to die. He needs them and will wait until he gets them. Guy asked, what is this energy that the biju are collecting? Naruto said, that is the funny thing. When they first come to a planet they are only actually as strong as a chunin. What everyone fucks up doing to them is using chakra agents them. When Kyubi attacked Konoha what did everyone do? The third said, used their most powerful moves to try and weaken it and stall it, why? Naruto said, Kakashi, mind if I use you for a demonstration for a moment. And before Kakashi had a chance to say anything Naruto grabbed Kakashi's arm and blue chakra started swirling around his arm and Kakashi tried to get free but after a few seconds Naruto let go and asked, 
what do you feel like Kakashi? Kakashi looked at Naruto hard while rubbing his arm and said, it felt like you sucked out a good portion of my chakra. What the hell was that about? Naruto said, that is what the biju do. Every attack that you used against Kyubi was actually making it stronger. A side effect of me having him extracted was I got his ability to take chakra away and also heal real fast. I can turn it off and on anytime I want but I thought an actual demonstration would best show everyone what I mean. Think of this though, how many times would I have been attacked if I stayed in this village with Kyubi and me? How many people would have used chakra to try and kill me? I would have become nothing but a gained battery. The Hokage was silent absorbing all the info and said, So, in essence we don't have to worry about dying from the virus because you got Kyubi held prisoner. Naruto said, No, remember me saying the talons work for Raven. Raven is Omega most trusted and loyal follower. He is powerful. If Omega would be a cage, Raven would be a Sanin. He also is the one who recruits humans to work for him. We know of two who work for him currently but have no idea where they are. If they can't find Kyubi they will eventually release a biju or two to go out and get the energy. The only thing we have done so far is delay the destruction of the planet. Kakashi asked, where are you at compared to him Naruto? Naruto was silent a moment and said, if I could go all out I would say Sanin. The problem is Raven is smart, very smart. He always makes sure that every battle he is in is always in his favor, he never leaves anything to chance. As he looked down. The Hokage asked, who are the two you know of that work for him Naruto? Naruto looked at the Hokage and said two names that sent a shiver down everyone's spine, Uchiha Itachi and Orochimaru. Silence ran over the room for several minutes and the Hokage said, you said there are two rangers left. I assume the other is Lee. Naruto nods and Guy said, so that is why he said he would not use what he knows. Naruto nods and the Hokage asked, Naruto, what are those three wounds on your chest and back? A voice from the window said, it's where he was attacked by Kyubi when I was tricked into releasing him, drawing everyone's attention to the window seeing Lee standing there. Naruto said, I was wondering when you would come in. Lee walked over and punched Naruto in the face and said, why? Guy and Kakashi grabbed Lee stopping him and Naruto rubbed the blood from his nose and said, because I did not want you to run off and avenge him. Lee screamed, me avenge him, you see him as your fucking father and you dare accuse me of wanting to avenge him. The Hokage asked, what are you talking about Lee? Lee turned to the Hokage and said, Sensei, Naruto here had me believe Sensei died of old age when in truth he died in an ambush, making everyone look at Naruto. Naruto got up and said, you're right Lee, I assume you saw the video of the battle, as he looked at Lee. Lee said, I saw it all right, it was on Telos, you and Sensei were surrounded by around 250 talons and Raven himself. I saw how Sensei power down and gave you his morpher before he ordered Alpha to transport you back to the command center as he fought and was killed so you could carry on the legacy, as he looked down. Naruto was silent and said, he could have come back with me but he chose to stay and now you and I are the last of the rangers. Lee said, you planned this, didn't you? You planned for me to continue the legacy so you could go after Raven. Naruto said, no, I planned to keep you a secret until the last moment so you could come in and finish Raven off when I do face him since he only knows about me and if I fail to hold him off then you can continue where I left off. Lee asked, and what about teamwork huh? Naruto sighs and said, there is no team Lee. There is only you and me and currently I am a liability because they know about me. The Hokage looked at Lee and asked, how long did you train Lee? Lee asked, what do you mean Hokage-sama? The Hokage said, well I mean how long did it take you to train to be a ranger? Naruto blinked and thought before he got wide as he realized where the Hokage was going with this. Before he had a chance to say something Lee said, the actual ranger training took a week. Naruto closed his mouth and Kakashi asked, a week, how can anything of such great importance be learned in a week? Naruto sighed and said, what I tell you does not leave this room. Lee has already said too much but I suppose you need to know exactly what he means. The truth is you have to pass a test. If you pass the test all the information on how to do the actual skills required is forcefully planted in your brain. 
sort of like a gained memory seal of sorts. The rest of the time in training is getting your body up to a level where you can actually use what you know. It's like the Kajbunshin Jutsu. Imagine having 1000 of them all learning how to do something over one week time and then dispel together. The Hokage said, that would cause a person brain to shut down. Naruto said, not with the procedure we use. However there is an extent to how much the brain can handle which is why all rangers are always less than 20 years old when they are first selected. Any older and you would die. Everyone processed the information and guy said, well that is most unyouthful. Naruto rolled his eyes and the Hokage said, Naruto, I am giving you an S rank mission. You along with Lee are to form a team to prepare to fight these forces. As you have stated this is too dangerous of a mission for one person alone which is why you wanted Lee to be a secret. I want you to use your teammates to aid you. Naruto said, with all due respect Hokage-sama but you're fucking nuts. I will not allow Sasuke or Sakura into any of the secrets I or Lee hold as rangers. Sakura already proved she does not give a shit about anyone but Sasuke today which is why she's in the hospital right now and as for Sasuke himself anyone with eyes can see he will take whatever power is offered to him and forget about the good of the team or the mission if it interferes with his own plan. Also you got to understand something else. I may be a ninja of this village but if it comes down to the villager stopping Omega you can guess what I will do, as he looked directly into the eyes of the third Hokage. The third narrowed his eyes and said, would you really leave this village to stop Omega? Naruto said, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. After all, isn't that the same bullshit line my father must have said the night he stopped the Kyubi? The third stared at Naruto for several tense moments while the other three people in the room were waiting to see what was to happen and prepared to move, question was, who would do what? Finally the third sighed a tired sigh and said, you have your father's determination Naruto. I can see you may not have known him like myself or Kakashi did but whatever Tommy taught you was the same as Minato would have. I am proud of you, even if I have to officially go against the idea, I respect your determination. Kakashi, do you still accept having Naruto on your team? As he looked at Kakashi. Kakashi looked at Naruto and asked, if you had to choose between your teammates and the mission, what would you choose? Naruto looked at Kakashi and said, my teammates. Kakashi smiled behind his mask and said, I accept him Hokage-sama. You know I believe those who follow the rules are trash but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. The third nods and looked at Lee and asked, what of you Lee, if it came down to Konoha or Naruto, who would you chose? Lee said, with all due respect to Konoha and you sir but I would have to go with Naruto. I have also been off world and I have seen what Omega has done to planets when he left before. Not even plants survive sir so if the choice ever had to be made my decision would be to fight as a ranger beside Naruto. The third sighed and said, what of you guy, do you still accept Lee as your student? Guy looked at Lee and said, Lee is my favorite student, I will not deny that and I may feel hurt he would not chose Konoha but I would also support his decision. Naruto and Lee both claim to see and know things none of us have ever seen. I would however like a sign of faith on both their parts showing exactly what a ranger is. Lee looked at Naruto and Naruto sighed and said, alright but you will never tell anyone without mine or Lee's permission. These skills we have are not some simple jutsu to share or play around with. Either one of us could stand toe to toe against Kyubi and win. That is the true strength of the power we have. That should also explain to you exactly how powerful Omega is. Lee, it's morphing time. Naruto slammed his hand against the bracelet on his arm and pulled it away as a sort of wind came out and Naruto pulled both arms to opposite sides of his body. He said, Wind Ranger power now. At that moment white armor shot out of the bracelet and flew onto each section of his body. Like Naruto Lee slammed his hand into the bracelet on his arm and when he pulled it away a pair of nunchucks made out of lightning pulling them to the side and when both his arms were apart he said, Lightning Ranger power now and yellow armor flew onto Lee's body. As both finished morphing everyone was stunned as they looked where the two boys were before. Naruto had a tornado with a falcon coming out of it on his chest and Lee had two lightning bolts with a mouse running on his chest and the lightning bolts were actually the tails of the mouse. Guy said, so you were the one who saved Tenten, Naruto. 
Naruto reached up slowly and undid a few clips on the side of his helmet and everyone could hear his air hissed out of it and he showed his face and said, Yes guy sensei. I was thinking of just informing Lee about sensei and then try to track down Orochimaru or Itachi but when I saw Tenten was about to be hurt I decided to intervene so I had to come back to Konoha to deliver my message, however if you see me or Lee use these powers, to hide who we are from our enemies please refer to us as we called ourselves when we morphed. I am the Wind Ranger and Lee is the Lightning Ranger. Lee power down. As the armor disappeared from both him and Lee. The third asked, why those names Naruto? Naruto said, as I told Kakashi I have double wind affinity as my element. Normally I would have only had just one wind but because of me becoming a ranger it automatically enhanced my first one. It's why the only jutsu I can do are wind. Lee is the same. Even though he can't use regular chakra he can use lightning chakra. He also has a double affinity toward it as well. He never showed it to anyone because to access it he has to basically be in his ranger mode. It has its own drawback for him but he makes up for it with his taijutsu from what I have seen. A ranger has to be aligned to whatever is his or her primary driving force. Some rangers have had animal alignments, other were to certain planets, while others were to certain colors. Here on this world we are driven by the elements which is why me and Lee are both elemental rangers. Kakashi asked, what's with those bracelets? Naruto sighed and sat down and said, I suppose you won't leave well enough alone. They are basically gained storage devices. Inside of each one is the technology behind our power, weapons, armor, communicators that allow us to talk to each other and alpha back in the command base. It also has other functions but I don't really feel like talking about them. The third looked at the device and asked, what if they fell in the wrong hands Naruto? Lee said, not possible, at least not likely I should say. When we put them on they can only be taken off two ways. One is we give them to someone directly. They can't fall off and can only be taken by someone else if we are dead. It's part of fear security. Guy asked, who's Alpha? Naruto smirked and said, now that is something hard to explain. Alpha is like our dispatcher. He was created by the original scientist in order to not only protect the rangers and our legacy but also scans for any signs of enemies. However his scan can only work on a localized area unless fear is a massive energy source like the bijus. Once he locates signs of enemies or receives a message for help he tells us where it and we go there and take care of the threat. He's also the one who was watching Kyubi and make sure he can't find a way to escape. Everyone sat silently for several moments and the third said, Alright, I believe that's enough for now but Naruto, I would like for you honestly to create a team. Your choice of who is it to join. If the threat is as dangerous as you claim then we need to stop it. You're all dismissed. Naruto nods and leaves in a beam of white energy and Lee leaves as a bolt of lightning. After they were gone the third said, I want you both to keep an eye on them both. They seem to have everything in order and all but if this threat is as big as they claim then they will need help. Also keep fear secrets. Kakashi said, Sir, what about Tenten? Guy asked, What about my youthful student? Looking at Kakashi. Kakashi said, Naruto has seemed to have taken a liking to her. In fact he has a date with her later today. The third said, Leave them be. Perhaps he will recruit her as a ranger. She is a skilled ninja from what I have seen and could perhaps sway him to be more forward toward the village but I do not want either of you to push this. Let things work out for now. Both nod in the third side before saying, Alright, bring the other Junins back in. Later that afternoon Tenten came walking up to the Hokage monument and noticed Naruto standing there with his back toward her and she noticed he had a bag beside him and some kind of bag on his back. He also had some kind of board he was holding in his hand that was also white but had a falcon flying on the back of it. Tenten said, Hello Naruto. Did everything go okay with the Hokage? Naruto said, Yeah Tenten, everything's fine. Did you eat a small meal or a big one? Tenten said, Small one like you asked. Why? Naruto smiled as he turned to look at her and pointed his finger toward the bag on the ground and said, I got an outfit in that bag for you. Just slip it on over your regular cloths and come back here where you're done. I want you show you something amazing. Tenten asked, why do I need those cloths to see what you want to show me? Naruto said, it's a secret. 
Now hurry please, I want you to be able to see it before it's too late. Tenton nods and grabs the bag walking into the woods a little bit and opened the bag and seemed confused by the cloths but put them on. She then walked back holding a helmet and Naruto had one in his hand and he was now standing on the board and said, Here, come stand in front of me and put your feet in the footholds on the board. Face away from me so I can finish hooking up the safety wires. Tenton blinked and asked, Safety wires, what is all this? Naruto said, It's a surprise. It's actually my favorite hobby. My sensei taught it to me and I wanted to show it to you so will you please trust me. Tenten looked at him a moment and sighed before turning to face away from Naruto and Naruto said, put the helmet on and I will explain everything as I finish hooking the wires, as he began putting clips on him and her linking them together. Tenten put on the helmet and at first it was totally dark but then the helmet became clear to see out of she heard Naruto voice from the helmet said, alright. This helmet is slowly using your chakra to power it. It has a radio built into it where you can talk to me and I can talk to you and our voices will be the same volume even if we are screaming. Now, if you look at the top of the screen you see little lines and the letter N on it. That is pointing due north. Now if you turn your head you will notice that the N will move. This is to help keep your direction clear. Tenton asked, I can tell direction with the training I have went through but why do we need helmets? Naruto said, let me finish explaining and you will understand. Now if you look to the right side you will notice a number zero on the side and they go up from there. Now I want you to say, set waypoint. Tenton said, okay, set waypoint. Naruto smirked and said, good, now say goodbye. As he pulled a cord on his chest and suddenly a huge parachute shot out as the wind caught it and dragged both teens backwards off the mountain. Tenton screamed as she started to flap her arms trying to find something to hold onto with her eyes closed. Naruto laughter was all she heard and after several moments Naruto stopped laughing and said, open your eyes. Tenton slowly opened her eyes and looked around and saw nothing but air. She then looked down and shrieked and Naruto said, relax, we are just flying. Tenton asked, what? In a scared voice. Naruto said, remember where the zero was earlier. What does it say now? Tenton looked and said, 1500. Naruto said, Correct. We are currently 1500 feet above the ground. Now look up. Tenton slowly looked up and saw a white parachute and asked, What is that? Naruto said, It's how we are flying. This is actually a version of another hobby I learned called skydiving. Now you see my arms holding these two cables. I want you to grab them and I will help teach you how to do this. Tenton said, I want to go down to the ground. Naruto said, can't, not until sunset, with a smirk. Tenton sighed and Naruto said, relax. Tenton pouted and after about five minutes Naruto said, all right, time for the real fun. As he sent a burst of chakra to his back and then suddenly the parachute was gone and they began to freefall. Tenton started to scream as Naruto used the airboard to do flip spins and cartwheels and said, isn't this great? Just think, pure freedom from the ground below, just like that dream you had. Tenton stopped screaming at this and was about to say something then she thought, hey wait, he's right, it does feel just like that dream. Hum that feels nice. As Naruto put his arms around her resting his head on her shoulder after leveling them out with no spinning. After about 10 seconds Naruto sent another burst of chakra back into his back and the parachute opened up and they stopped free falling. Tenton shrieked at the sudden jolt and Naruto frowned and said, show some backbone girl or are you a scaredy cat like Sakura? Now remember folks, I said woman like Tenton fall under a certain rule. Tenton's eyes darkened it and she said, show me how to do this. Naruto smiled and over the next 30 minutes he used his wind control to keep them in the air and flying basically over the village of Konoha. After that Naruto said, well you got it down, you can control the board free falling, speed control, direction control, and the parachute all with no problem or help from me. Now it's time for your final lesson. Tenton asked, what is that? Naruto smirked and said, solo. As he sent chakra to the board and a second board appeared beside them with a kajbunshin on it and then a quick replacement Naruto was on the board free falling leaving Tenton with a kajbunshin who went up in smoke as she was all to herself controlling the parachute now attached to her back. Just then Naruto appeared beside her without a parachute and said, 
Send Chakra to your back to cancel the shoot and do it Aegean to unseal it. He then slapped her ass and said, Tag, you're it. As he free fell away from her. Tenton eyes became pissed and she sealed the parachute and free fell after him. Together they had a battle of Naruto outmaneuvering her as Tenton tried to get close to him. Naruto smirked and said, Tenton, check your height. Tenton looked and saw she had less than 1,000 feet left and went wide-eyed and she quickly sent a chakra burst to her back pulling out the parachute when suddenly it came out and slowed her speed when it was gone from her back and Naruto now was behind her again and had the chute on his back but he sealed it and took control of fear dive shocking her and he put his arms around her again and rested his chin on her neck and they slowly fell toward the ground. Tenton watched as they landed gently on her family shop roof and sliding to a stop Naruto unclipped himself from her and he jumped back avoiding the punch she threw. Tenton quickly chased after him still having the helmet and gear on and Naruto smiled before he went up in smoke leaving her fuming on the roof. When Tenton got calmed down she went back inside her family house shop and saw a dozen white roses sitting beside her bed and a plate with some food still warm sitting there. She blushed and walked over and saw a card that said simply sorry. Tenton sighed as she went to the bathroom to get washed up and came out and began to eat. When she was done she went to the kitchen to return the dishes and heard someone in the forge room. As she approached she heard voices. One was Naruto and the other was her dad. Dustin said. So tell me, what was this person or thing that attacked you earlier today Tenton told me about. Naruto said. Trouble. It seems I am going to have to find a new place to stay soon because I don't want to put you and Tenton at risk. Dustin who was leaning against the wall said, We can take care of ourselves. Naruto eyes darkened a moment and said, Perhaps but I don't want to take the chance. I will keep my promise and do the job you paid me for but instead of staying here I will find someplace else. Dustin sighed and said, You're going to break her heart. Tenton blinked and Naruto asked, What? Dustin said. I seen the way you both have been acting since you arrived. She's happier than she has been since her mother died and you seem to be finally changing being around people again. So tell me, what do you plan to do? Naruto was quite a moment and said, I don't know. I don't understand what it is I am feeling around her. I mean I was trained to keep secrets but I keep finding myself letting her through my defenses. I think being away from her can help me figure out how to keep her out. Dustin slapped Naruto upside the head and said, I swear, you're just like your father Minato. You may be a skilled fighter but when it comes to women you don't understand that it's not about keeping them out. It's about keeping them in. Put them in your heart and hold them there, never let them leave and you will be fine. Then you won't have to worry about defense because they will become your defense. As he walked out the room ignoring Tenton as he walked by. Naruto thought it over and whispered, I want to. Dot but if I do she will be put in danger because of me. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Tenton thought as she walked away, but the needs of the few are sometimes greater than the needs of the many. The next day when Tenton awoke she went to Naruto room and knocked. After waiting several moments and no answer she opened the door and found the room completely clean but did not see any sign of Naruto. She quickly went downstairs and Dustin was sipping coffee and said, he's gone. He's already done his work for the day but left before sunrise, as he put his coffee down and looked at the newspaper. Tenton asked, where did he go? Dustin asked, why? Never looking up. Tenton said, I want to talk to him. Dustin shrugged and said, I don't know. He's untamed like the wind. Ironic really if you think about it. I wonder if anyone ever will tame him. By the way, don't you have a team meeting today? Tenton sighs and grabbed her breakfast her father cooked and ate it before getting ready and leaving. When she was gone Dustin thought, Naruto, you have a lot to learn about woman. You basically just signed your own bounty from Tenton and she will never let it go. She going to hunt you down. Ah oh well, wonder what their kids might look like, as he smirked to himself. When Tenton made it to her team training ground she saw Lee meditating and sweat dropped before thinking, wait, he might know. She walked over and said, Hey Lee, you wouldn't know where Naruto is would you? Lee said, Yes but I'm not telling, sorry, still with his eyes closed. Tenton crossed her arms and said, Why not? Lee said, He asked me not to. Tenton said, But you're my teammate. Lee said, And he's my friend. 
I am sorry, asked his team, with a smirk as he looked at her. Tenton's eyes went wide in understanding and said, thanks Lee, as she took off running away. Guy appeared moments later and asked, where's your youthful teammates Lee? Lee said, Neji said he had to escort Hanabi to the academy so he would be a few moments late and Tenton is dealing with hormones. Guy sweat dropped and said, Lee, you should not talk about your teammates' bodily functions like that. Lee said, I know Guy sensei but I was speaking the truth. Well I guess I can warm up before others get here, as he stood up and jumped from tree kicking limbs off of the side of two trees all the way up both trees. Guy said, very good Lee, now pick up the limbs you broke and put them in the sand pit so I can get rid of them. Always keep the place clean and youthful, Lee said, I know sensei, as he disappeared and reappeared a moment later as all the limbs had moved. Guy looked and asked, how are you so fast Lee? Lee taped his armband and said, I need to get used to using it again so I am using that to help me so that way when I finally take my weights off I will be faster. Just then Neji walked up and said, speed won't matter if you are fated to lose. Lee ignored Neji and Neji asked, where's Tenton? Guy said, Tenton is having her youthfulness today so she will meet up with us later. Let's go to the Hokage Tower to get our missions. Tenton after leaving Lee quickly went to Team 7 training ground and saw Team 7 sitting on a bridge and she ran up and said as she stopped in front of Naruto, why? Naruto said, it's personal Tenton. Just then Kakashi appeared and Naruto said, you're early. Kakashi said, well, someone blew up my apartment this morning so I had no choice but to show up early. You wouldn't know who would do it. Naruto said, no, besides it wasn't exactly that bad. I mean it was only green spandex. Kakashi said, do you have any idea how much mental trauma I went through waking up with all my walls being covered with that? Where the hell did you get that much anyways? Naruto smiled and said, Lee. Kakashi slaps his head and said, right. So are you joining our team Tenten? Tenten said, no, I just came to find out something from Naruto. So are you going to tell me? Naruto smirked and said, Mission time right Kakashi sensei. Kakashi nods and Naruto got up and slapped Tenten on the ass and said, see you at the tower, as he disappeared in a swirl of wind. Tenten screamed pulling out weapons and began running for the tower. Kakashi sighed and said, might as well join them. Last one there has to run extra laps, as he disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Sasuke quickly took off leaving Sakura who tried to keep up. In the Hokage Tower the third saw the door to his office open and said, Hello guy, where is Tenten? Naruto appeared just then in a swirl of wind shocking everyone and said, Lee, plan 45, as he jumped on the ceiling holding onto it with chakra on his feet. Lee went wide-eyed and said, Damn you Naruto, as he quickly grabbed Guy and Neji and jumped over the Hokage desk behind the third. The third asked, What's going on her? Just then the door burst in off its hinges and Tenten was seen fuming holding several kanais. She looked around and saw her teammates baying the Hokage and at that moment Naruto let go of his hands he was holding onto the ceiling also with and stopped with his face right in front of Tenten making her scream as she fell backwards on her butt. Naruto said, why is it every time you get in my face your ass starts hurting? Tenten growled and threw a kanai at Naruto who caught it and said, thanks, I was running low as he put it in his weapons pouch. Just then Kakashi arrived, the third side and said, all right, that's enough, where is the rest of your team Kakashi? Sasuke ran in at that moment's breathing a little hard and Sakura a few moments later gasping for breath holding her chest. Naruto flupped and landed on his feet and helped Tenten up who took a swing at him and connected with his face only for him to go up in a puff of smoke and Sakura flew backwards as Naruto appeared where Sakura was a moment before. Kakashi asked, do you have to be so hard on my female student Tenten? Sakura got up holding her nose and Naruto walked over and said, move your hands or I will break them, as he stood in front of her. Sakura quickly moved them afraid and Naruto grabbed her nose and twisted it and everyone heard bones snap and Naruto hand glowed a second and Naruto said, fear, all better, as he turned to walk away. Sakura went to punch him in the back of the head only to hit Sasuke. Naruto said from where Sasuke was, was that necessary Sakura, 
I mean we all know you want him on his back but to actually try to kill him to do it, for a shame for a shame, as he shook his head. The third sighed and said, that's enough everyone. Naruto said, hey old man, got any high C rank or low B rank missions? The third said, yes but you just graduated from the Academy Naruto, your team is not ready for that high of missions. Naruto said, hear me out a moment sir. I was just thinking it would be a good learning experience for my teammates to see what a real team is like by having a joint mission with team guy here. Kakashi sweat drops and said, you just don't want any D-rank missions, do you? Naruto said, do you Inu? Kakashi thought a moment and said, I agree with him sir, it would be a good learning experience for my team. The third asked, do you object guy? Guy said, no sir. A chance to show my youthful rival exactly how high my flames of youth burn would be greatly appreciated. The third said, Very well. I have a B rank mission. We received word that A rank missing Ninaoi Rokusho has been spotted near the border of rain and has been raiding a few of the smaller villages in the area with a group of bandits. You are to go and eliminate the bandits and if the opportunity presents itself him also and recover the legendary region which he stole. It has a one month time limit. You can leave as soon as you're ready. Dismissed. Naruto said, Aoi Rakusho, hum. Do you have an updated bingo book Hokage-sama? The last one I had is about a year old. The third reached into his desk and pulled one out and threw it to Naruto who caught it and flipped till he found the page with Aoi on it and said, hum, seems he was a chunin when he left but now has moved on to being a junin skill level. If he were to go into rain country are we allowed to chase? The third said, only if he is already wounded. Naruto nods and said, which gate and when? Looking at Guy and Kakashi. Guy looked at Kakashi and Kakashi said, south gate, one hour. Naruto nods and disappears in a swirl of wind. Sasuke growls and punches a hole in the wall and the third said, that's coming out of your pay Sasuke. Sasuke said, whatever, as he left to get ready. Once everyone was gone the third said, so what is the real reason you wanted a high rank mission Naruto? Naruto appeared in a puff of smoke from the flag behind the third and said, I see you were the only one who actually detected my real switch. Anyways I decided to listen to your request about making a team and I also had some really good advice from someone last night. I don't know if who I have in mind will work or not so I want a chance to see her in actual combat. The third said, Tenton right. Naruto nods and said, yeah, I talked it over with Lee this morning and he agrees that she might be a good ranger. He says she's good, I already been testing her anger and that's something that will have to be worked on but so far I am leading toward letting her join. However if she does I would like to request something from you sir. The third asked, and that would be. Naruto said, if she does I would like to have team guy and my team joined together under Kakashi and guy. Kakashi told me already the council was pushing our team to pass because of Sasuke so if you need something to get it approved just say it's a good chance to help Sasuke improve his taijutsu. Blow the smoke up fear asses so to speak. The third snorted after that and said, we will see. I will think it over. Is there any other arguments you have to be useful to approve this? Naruto said, well, if things came down and Lee." Myself and Tenton if she passes had to leave the village to take care of some of Omega threats then at least you would not have to worry about the extra paperwork and headache trying to reconfigure the teams. The third said, alright, good point. Well your teams should be waiting for you and depending on how your test goes if I will allow it. Naruto nods and left in a swirl of wind. When Naruto got to the gate he saw the others already there and Kakashi said, what took you? Naruto said, I wanted to get on the road of life but I don't have a girlfriend to show me the landmarks. Perhaps someday. What's up Spanky? Tenton went red and took a swing at Naruto and Naruto chuckled before he blew everyone over with a strong wind and Naruto said in a commanding voice, Okay Kakashi sensei, Guy sensei, what is the travel order and how fast do we want to get to this town? Kakashi said, Guy has agreed to let me take lead on this mission being the senior of the two of us. Naruto. How are your detection skills? Naruto said, average. Kakashi said, right, Hayuga, I want you in the rear. Naruto you're in front. Tenten, Sakura, I want you both beside Guy in the middle. Lee, Sasuke, 
Both of you follow Naruto and if he stops or signals something wrong I want you to stop immediately. I will take guard by the Hyuga in the rear. Neji said. My name is Neji. Kakashi said. Right, good you know your name. Anyways let's move out. Naruto set the pace. Naruto smiled and said. Really? Lee said. Oh god. As he paled. Kakashi said. Remember to keep it safe for our slowest member. Naruto frowned and said. Okay, so keep it slow enough for dipshit and dimweed. This is going to take forever. As he created five kajbunshins and nods before they take off leaving a dust trail and Kakashi whistled and said, Damn. Naruto smiled and took to the trees heading toward Suna. Kakashi said after they traveled about five minutes, you're going the wrong way. Naruto said, No, I got info a storm is coming in from the north with really bad winds, rain and hail so I decided to sweep south of it while heading there. Kakashi asked, how accurate is your info? Naruto did something Kakashi couldn't see and said, catch Kakashi, as he threw something small and metal in the air. Kakashi looked at it and asked, what's this? Naruto said, that's a personal data assistant Kakashi. The white dot on the screen is our current location, the gray is a map of the land and the red that is moving slowly as the current weather moving. It's about two minute old info. Kakashi whistled and said, Damn, this could come in handy. Naruto said, Yeah, now toss back, as he held up his hand. Kakashi nods and throws it toward Naruto but Sasuke decided to try and get it by jumping to intercept it. Naruto said, 21 Lee. Lee disappeared and reappeared a second later with the PDA in his hand and Sasuke landed on a branch only to fall to the ground as the limb broke under him. Naruto stopped and said, Nobody likes a thief Sasuke. That's why nobody likes your clan. As Lee handed Naruto back his PDA. Naruto looked at it and said, Shit. That's not good. Everyone looked at Naruto except Sakura who jumped down to check on Sasuke. Guy asked, What's wrong? Naruto said, Looks like my idea of going around the south end of the storm was a good idea but the area where we are supposed to be heading on is getting slammed by it right now. Sakura said, Why the hell is that important Naruto and why is no one helping Sasuke-kun? Naruto sighed and said, You understand right Kakashi? Kakashi nods and said, Yeah, it means our task just got harder. We can't use tree branch travel in that area or the main road unless we want the bandits to know we are there. That means our travel time just increased by about three days slow travel in the mud. Naruto nods and said, Neji, Tenten, how fast are you guys? Guy said, they can go 15 miles in two hours. Naruto nods and said, oh, okay, Kakashi sensei, do you have any radios or other short range devices? Kakashi slowly nods and asked, what about you guy, do you also? Guy nods and said, all Junin senseis have them for fear team training, why? Naruto said, good, can they be on the same channel? Kakashi said, yes, why Naruto? Naruto said, I can carry both Sasuke and Sakura at the speed Neji and Tenten can run using my kajbunshins. We could get into the area in about 36 hours if we went all out. That would give us a chance to use the storm to hide our arrival since it looks looks like it goes all the way to the mountain range of the elemental country. At least that's my idea. If anyone else has any ideas I am more than willing to listen. Kakashi frowned and said, It seems the best idea but I will take point then with Neji beside me. Naruto, you will use your kajbunshin and form a diamond formation in the middle with Tenten bringing up your rear. Lee and Guy will take the rear. Does everyone understand? Sasuke said, I am not being carried. Sakura said, Yeah, why does the idiot there? She was silenced by a Sanban needle in the neck and Naruto said, Thanks Tenten. As he created a kajbunshin and had it pick up Sakura and another knock Sasuke out before picking him up as well. Kakashi nods and the group took off. When Sakura awoke a few hours later she found herself soaked from the rain that was hitting her and she looked and saw she was on Naruto back and the trees were moving at a blur. She looked over and saw Sasuke knocked out on another Naruto back and Tenten quickly put a gag over Sakura mouth and said in a low voice, No noise, we are in enemy territory right now. Any noise and we might all die. Understand. Sakura nods and Tenten removed the gag and said in a low voice again, By the way, 
you're on a clone, if you destroy it and fall you will most likely die so try not to move. We've been traveling for nearly three days now with a few stops. Sakura went wide-eyed and was frozen from the dying threat. The clone smirked hearing it all. Sasuke awoke about 20 minutes later and punched Naruto in the head making him go up in smoke and Sasuke not realizing it was a clone fell slamming himself into a tree branch at around 8 miles per hour. Everyone stopped as he began to scream and Naruto quickly knocked him out and said, damn idiot. Why did he have to do it now? I mean I only knocked him out three times on the way here. Kakashi shook his head and said, how the hell did he become the rookie of the year? He should have realized by now that he's being carried by a clone. Naruto sighed and said, well thanks to Sir Emo here we may have been discovered. Just then a kunai was snatched out of the air by Naruto who quickly threw it in back from where it came impaling it in a merc's head and said, well, at least we don't have to actually look for this dickhead now. Kakashi sweat drops and asked, how exactly did you lead us right to where they were camped? Naruto smiled and threw his PDA back to Kakashi who went wide-eyed a moment and said, that was cheating Naruto. You got him on some kind of video surveillance. Naruto said, and, it saved us time, money, and headaches. Anyways, does anyone count more than 50? Guy said, I got 33, where are the other 17? Tenton said, I got 41 counting the 9 hold in the small camo tent at 10 o'clock. Neji said, I see 48, where are the other two? Kakashi said, underground, looks like we got a couple of Iwa nins in with the mercs, as he pulled up his headband. Lee said, hey Naruto, first one to 25 buys the other's dinner. Naruto smiled and said, deal. At that moment Naruto and Lee both disappeared in blurs of yellow and white and several men screamed out in pain as they fell to the ground either dead or unable to fight. Tenton said, hell no as she started to launch weapons at men picking them off as well as killing the ones that were left wounded. Kakashi began making hand seals and sent several fireballs at a couple of men before pulling out two kanais and began fighting some mercs. Neji got into a jukan stance and sealed off several chakra points in three men before he was forced to dodge. Sakura screamed as a man emerged from the ground slowly in front of her as she held the asleep Sasuke in her arms. Tenton appeared in front of her and quickly unsealed a sword and got into a fighting stance. Naruto who had just finished killing Merc-12 backflipped in mid-air and landed behind Tenton with his back to her and said, you got another one coming from underground also. Tenton nods and said, any plan? Naruto said, yeah, remember how I showed you my wind skills blocking weapons? Tenton said, yeah, why? Naruto said, Close your eyes and hold on to your sword real tight pointing in front of you. I will do the rest. Tenton nods and closes her eyes and all of a sudden she felt really sick and dizzy as she fell to her knees before opening her eyes. When she did she gasped as both the Iwa nins had been sliced into 30 pieces total. She began to puke as did Sakura and Naruto appeared in front of Sakura with a blade of wind holding off a blade of lightning. Tenton gasped and moved backwards as she looked and saw Thier target holding the legendary Raijin and Naruto was holding it off with her sword surrounded by wind. Aoi said, well kid, you got some skills to block my attack but they are useless against me. I have the power of a cage. Naruto narrowed his eyes and slipped his foot under Aoi for a trip forcing Aoi to jump backwards or fall on his back. Lee appeared behind him and kicked him in mid-air and sent him flying back toward Naruto who like he did in Tenton's shop started swinging Tenton's sword surrounded by a blade of wind in a figure eight around him. Aoi grunted from the surprise kick in the back and when he saw himself flying back toward Naruto he prepared the Raijin to slice through Naruto. The Raijin's aim was true and missed Naruto blade that was coming up to block it on the Kata Naruto was performing and was just beginning to touch Naruto's skin when the blade disappeared as Aoi screamed because his hand had been cut off still holding the blade but with no chakra feeding it the sword was useless. Naruto smiled as he saw Aoi holding his bleeding stump and said, You know, our orders were to kill you but I think I know someone who would like you alive, as he slowly walked toward Aoi. Kakashi landed beside Naruto and said, Naruto, our orders were to kill him. He's a missing nin. Naruto said, yes and no Kakashi, look at his headband. Kakashi looked and saw a rain headband and Naruto said, 
Now what do you think Ibiki could get from Aoi here about why Rain and I were working together? Especially considering it was Aoi who gave Ibiki his scars. Kakashi eyes widen and asked, How do you know about that Naruto? Naruto tossed him the bingo book he got from the Hokage and said, Ibiki placed a bounty personally on him. I did some research and found out why. As he stopped in front of the scared Aoi who had backed himself against a tree. Aoi said, you will never take me alive. Naruto grabbed Aoi by the neck and Chakra appeared around his hand and Neji gasped from the tree limb he was on and asked, How are you doing that? Naruto said, New, possible bloodline, as he threw the now asleep Aoi on the ground. He then ripped of Aoi headband and tied it around the bleeding arm of Aoi tight enough to stop the blood and said, How many Lee? Lee appeared beside Naruto and said, 24. Naruto said, Then no winner. Lee snickered and said, Agreed. Tenton asked, What did you do back then when you told me to close my eyes? Naruto said, I put you in a twister of wind and since your blade was sticking out as you spun you became a human blender. Sakura screamed, You monster. All of you, how can you kill these people like this? As she still looked sick. Kakashi sighed and said, Sakura, in the ninja world sometimes you are forced to kill. Sakura said, not those two, fear murderers, pointing toward Naruto and Lee. Lee said, So who's carring the harpy? Naruto said, She can carry herself and Sir Pukstain. As Naruto grabbed Tenten's sword and walked over, removing the heads of each of the mercs and the Iwa Nin and sealing them in a scroll. Kakashi sighed as Lee and Naruto put all the bodies in a pile before he set them on fire. Naruto used his wind to speed it up and then destroy the ashes after putting them out and said, silent and without a trace. Thus is the way of a ninja. He then grabbed Aoi body putting it on his back and jumping away toward Konoha. Lee jumped following him and Sakura screamed, wait, what about me and Sasuke-kun? Kakashi said, think of it as training, as he smiled behind his mask and jumped into the trees. Sakura grunted as she picked up Sasuke body and slowly started to follow the others. Guy asked beside Kakashi, so how long do you think? Kakashi looked over his shoulder as they jumped throat the trees and said, 10 minutes tops. Once she's out I will grab Sasuke and you can grab her and we can make some real time. Guy nods and Naruto said about 10 yards ahead of Kakashi, I say 6 minutes Kakashi. Lee looked over and said, 4, as he set pace beside Naruto. Tenten said, I think 3 minutes. She's already using chakra to keep this pace and we are going slow as hell. Neji said, one minute, with his bloodline active. At two minutes traveling Sakura passed out from chakra exhaustion and Kakashi caught Sasuke in mid-fall as Guy caught Sakura. Naruto said, finally, as the entire group picked up speed. When the team got back to Konoha it had only been a total of seven days. In that time Naruto kept sucking Aoi chakra out of him only leaving enough to keep his alive. Every time Sakura would wake up the group would force her to carry Sasuke until she passed out again. Sasuke was put out thanks to a few well-placed pressure points from Tenten and Kakashi. The group walked through the gates and went straight toward the Hokage Tower. On the way a squad of Anbu appeared and Kakashi said, Dragon, tell Ibiki to meet us at the Hokage Tower, we have a present for him. The dragon-faced Anbu said, Hi, as he motioned for the squad and they all disappeared. Naruto scowled and said, Lee, drawing said boy's attention. Lee stepped up to beside Naruto and Naruto whispered, run ahead and contact Alpha, have him do a scan of the village and also warp my PDA to him. The batteries are dead, then meet us at the Hokage Tower and have the Hokage get a doctor for Sasuke. Lee nods and runs ahead of the group until he was out of sight. Guy asked, where is Lee going Naruto? Naruto said, I just was having him go and get a doctor for Sasuke. He does have four broke ribs. Sakura screeched. Sasuke-kun has four broke ribs. Guy immediately dropped her on her ass and stepped on her stomach never breaking stride and said, now that you're done pretending to be asleep you can carry your own self. Sakura gasped for breath and Naruto snickered and said, well at least you protected her with chakra when you stepped on her. Guy smiled and said, so you noticed huh? Naruto nods and Tenten asked, so are you finally going to tell me where you're staying now? Naruto said, hum, 
What do I get if I do tell you? Tenten said, to live another few minutes. Naruto nods and said, then nope, as he grabbed a sanbon that was flying toward his ass before pocketing it and said, at this rate I won't have to buy weapons ever again. Tenten growled and Naruto yelped as the sanbon that was in his pocket exploded blowing a hole in the side of his pants. Naruto said, was that really necessary, if you wanted me out of my pants you didn't have to blow them off. Tenten went beat red before screaming and tried to hit Naruto with a kunai only for it to go into Aoi leg. Ibiki who was standing at the tower said, hey, don't ruin my present with kunais. That's my job. With a smile on his face that even froze Kakashi and Guy. Naruto dropped Aoi on the ground and said, he's all yours but he's now a rain nin also and he was working with a couple of chunin level I was. Here are the heads of all the mercs and the two nins as well. Handing the scroll he sealed them all into Ibiki. Ibiki nods and said, so I take it you're the new kid I heard everyone talking about. The one who shows up and basically kicks ass and takes names. You're also the one who was seen groping a girl while floating in the air. Naruto said, hey, it wasn't a grope. It was a slap on the ass, making everyone sweat drop. Tenten yelled, baka, and tried to punch Naruto only for him to grab her wrist form a mini tornado whirlwind around her making her dizzy and then he grabbed her and dipped her back and said, why do you keep trying to play with my head? First you try and blow my pants off and now you try to pound me. You are a dirty little girl. As he smiled making her spin as he stood her back up. Tenten said, damn it Naruto. I am so going to give you a hard time. Naruto put his hand under his chin and said, don't you mean you want me to give you my hard time? Tenten went beat red again but this time she blew back with a nosebleed. Naruto held up his hand and Kakashi grabbed the money in it and Naruto said, so you were right, she does think pervertedly about me. Ibiki snickered as he left in a swirl of leaves with Aoi. Naruto picked up Tenten bridal style and the group went inside. When they got to the Hokage office Lee was sitting on the window seal and a doctor was there and the third saw the blood on Tenten and Sakura who was holding her stomach and Sasuke who was passed out screamed, Doctor, help them now. The doctor runs to check on Tenten and said, PNS, as he ran over to Sakura and said, Just a bruised rib sir. And then ran over to Sasuke and said, He's going to need to get to the hospital. He has four broke ribs. The third said, Okay take him and Sakura and get them both fixed. The doctor nods and grabs Sasuke before walking out with Sakura behind them. Once they were gone the third looked at Naruto and said, alright, what happened? Kakashi said, Sasuke wounds are self-inflicted sir. The third blinked and blinked again and asked, how can someone break four of their own ribs? Naruto said, we were traveling at high chunin speed sir and I had a kajbunshin carrying Sasuke and Sakura because we were trying to use the storm that came through the area as cover. Neither of them have the conditioning to keep up with us for long. Anyways Sasuke was passed out and when he woke up he decided to kill my clone in mid jump not realizing it was a kajbunshin. When it was destroyed he fell toward the next tree branch at chunin level speed and hit it breaking his ribs as well as alerting the enemy to our position. The third sweat dropped and said, does everyone agree? When everyone nods the third said, what about Sakura? Guy said, my arms were tired of carring her on the way back so I dropped her when she woke up and I did not react in time to keep from stepping on her. The third nods and said, was the mission a success? Kakashi said, yeah, we captured Aoi and he is in Ibiki's hands right now getting some info about why two Iwa nins were paired up with a rain nin using mercs to attack towns. Here is the region also. Putting the small tube on the table. The third said. Very well, anyone have anything else to say? Neji asked. If I may sir, what is PNS and why did you not ask why Tenten has blood on her? The third said. Perverted nose syndrome. It's when the brain has an overload of perverted thoughts. Naruto said, sounds like it's quite common, as he smiled behind his mask. The third said, very. Anyways, is there anything else to report? No one said anything and the third said, everyone but Naruto may leave. As everyone left Naruto still was holding tent and bridal style and the third asked, so. Naruto said, she has intrigued me sir. I will admit that. 
Her fighting style and her trust in me and Lee show good judgment but she's very easily enraged when someone insults her as a woman or a ninja or act perverted. I tested her on those along with a few other things and she reacts without much thought, though she is learning, the last attack she did on me blew a hole in my pants so she's starting to think before attacking. I think we might put her in the trials to see if she can pass. The third asked, what exactly are the trials? Naruto walked over and set Tenten on the couch and hit a pressure point making sure she was out and said, the trials are a test of judgment, courage, strength, character, and stamina. If I were to give the trials to her I would like for Lee, myself, and her to be off of duty for the next month. We won't be in Konoha and won't be able to be contacted either. If she passes she would be a ranger, if not well, I don't really know, all those who actually were deemed worthy to take the trials have always passed and became rangers. I guess we can put her in the hospital and make her believe she had a head injury and everything she sees or hears is a de-illusion. The third frowned and asked, are there any others you see who might be qualified? Naruto thought and said, currently no, I have only been interacting with mostly this group and have not really seen anyone else. The third nods and asked, so how big of a team do you need? Naruto said, a full team is usually six but there have been occasional teams of three. The third asked, so when do you want to leave? Naruto sighed and said, the sooner the better. In fact we could leave now since to pass this test she does not really need to know it's a test and since she's asleep would make it easier to set up. It has to be as real as possible to prove accurately. The third sighed and said, very well but I am trusting you with both hers and Lee's safety. I want you back in one month. Naruto nods as he picks Tenten up and said, can you inform her father she's on a long term mission out of town again and don't tell anyone where we actually are. The third nods and Naruto and Tenten disappeared in a white beam. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.